Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the GDQ Hotfix. I hope you're having a wonderful start to your October and a good weekend. Um, and welcome to Going Places. It's been a while since this show has been on. Um, and lo and behold, if you've seen any of the previous shows, you won't recognize this locale of mine. Um, I am. I have been going places, and yeah, it's been it's been a, on a bit of a stall um, as I've I've been moving, but. You know we're here, we're back, um, and we've got we've got some more games. So if you've haven't been across here before with going places, this show I like to call it a speedrun travel show, where we go across the world having a look at you know national treasures, some games that you can't find sort of in one specific. Well, you can't find around the world. You can only find in specific places. So region exclusive games, as well as games that we take on our travels, like handheld games, and. Yeah, just all that kind of shtick. We last episode, which was a little while back now, we had Flower, Sun and Rain, which is a really strange and interesting Japanese exclusive PS2 game that's run by Adrian VG, as well as Resident Evil, one of the DS titles run by Punchy. So if that's something that you're interested in and any of the previous VODs from our hot fixes, you can find them on the Games Done Quick YouTube page. Um, and if you have any games that you think fit into this sort of category, then um, you should check out the gamesdonequick.com slash hotfix website and yeah, get send them my way. I'd definitely, definitely like to see them. And speaking of game submissions, um, AGDQ, everybody, thank you for submitting for AGDQ 2023. That is going to be happening on January the 8th to the 15th. And if you want to see what other people have submitted, then um, yeah, you can check out the submissions that are publicly available. And best of luck, everybody who submitted. But we are not here for AGDQ at the moment. We are here for Going Places. And we are here for Monster Hunter Unite. Hello, Rosianna. Hello. So what's going on with this game, hey? So this is Monster Hunter Freedom Unite. It is a PSP game from 2008. And today I'm going to be running Any Percent, A State of Crisis, which begins from a new character and ends when we kill a monster called the Shen Garen. Awesome. And I believe we've got some lovely folks on the couch as well for commentary. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> I'm Ristretto. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and joining me today is my good friend Jal Bagel. Hello, hello. I'm Jal Bagel. <laughs> Both good friends of Rosiana and Monster Hunter yeah. speedrunning, and we're we're game to sit down here and talk about some Monster Hunter game I've never played and have seen today. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, we are ready whenever you are. Um, so, yeah, best of luck. Okay. Uh, do you want me to count you in for the timer? Sure. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I think Rosianne has been running this game as long as I've I've known her on Twitch, which is like four or five years now. Wow, well, that's that's yeah. dedication. Okay, I'm ready. All ready. And three, two. One. <laughs> Welcome to the world of Monster Hunter. Okay. This is like traditional Monster Hunter 2. If you ever played any of the, even some of the more recent games like Generations Ultimate, you'll recognize some of these maps. But this is, for most people, way outside their, their comfort zone. This is this is one of the games that's held to a standard as one of the one of the the ways in which the series is most brutal. Different games have different types of difficulty spikes in the Monster Hunter series. Some are like super duper fast, some are super long, some have huge grinds in them. This game has a lot of different aspects that make it intensely difficult in some ways that have made it, I don't know, kind of infamous. Yeah. One of the one of the main takeaways of Monster Hunter, right, uh, is the kind of game that it is. Uh, guys, it's very shallow hunt monsters. <laughs> There's really not much else <laughs> going on. So as far as story is concerned, Big Crab. Uh, that's that's what we're working towards. Um, but Monster Hunter games are really unique. There are 14 weapons in the game, and Rosion is going to be using mainly uh, Light Bowgun and Heavy Bowgun. They're the ranged weapons, and you're going to see why. Uh, they take uh, you know, Rosion is going to take advantage of the fact that a lot of the early game monsters are weak to fire, and so she's going to be mainly using uh, fire ammo to kind of 
really whittle down these monsters quickly. But the beginning of this game is mostly kind of based around uh, farming for large barrel bombs. And I mean, they, they, this is exactly what it sounds like. It's a big barrel. It's a big bomb. It's going to do a fixed amount of damage. And Roseon is super clever with this game on um, how you position those bombs to get certain flinches to end up in traps that are pre-set up. It, it's just wild. Um, you know, I don't know, Roseon, if you're going to be able to explain that a little bit better for some of these fight scripts that you have. But that's the thing to really look out for in this run that makes it truly unique. Mm -hmm. Folks who might not know that much about Monster Hunter or folks who might not have watched a lot of Monster Hunter before might be familiar with some of the more common or like some of the more popular speedruns that you might know about for Monster Hunter where people will boot up a specific quest with a specific monster and they'll practice that one quest over and over until they've got it near perfect and they've killed that monster as quickly as they can. This is a different type of speedrun called a real-time attack speedrun, which is basically a full game or air quotes full game where Rosie is starting with a fresh character and playing through until we get to the big crab itself, Shen Galren. So it's a it's a mad dash through the game, not really giving yourself the chance to to gather resources or armor or any sort of supplies that you would normally rely on when playing Monster Hunter. And so the supplies that Rosie needs to, to make the bowguns work in this run are going to be supplies to, to obviously shoot the monsters with bullets, but also bombs and lots of other materials that will let her lock the monsters down and keep them from kind of running around or attacking her, or kind of throwing off the script of the speedrun. And so it's a, it's a mad dash and a mad kind of balancing act of you're fighting the monsters as fast as possible, but you're also trying to gather all these materials that you need along the way. So the the quest progression in this game too, um, we have to complete a certain number of quests in each rank to unlock the urgent quest. Um, this this one still works on key quests, right, Ristretto? Yeah, so there's going to be a couple different quests that are required. Rosiana is going to unlock, like, so let's say, five or six different quests, and three or four of them are going to be required to progress to the next rank and closer and closer to that that final village boss. Yeah, and so um, this one is the Popo Tongue quest, if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. uh, which is kind of RNG, um, but these kind of mammoth elephant looking things, these are called Popo. They're docile herbivores. We want their tongues. <laughs> Who knows why we want them, but we do. <laughs> they're a delicacy or something. Probably. Uh, they're probably, probably, yeah, they're probably delicious. Stew. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Fry it up on a stick right over a, right over a barbecue spit. Sure. Um, but a lot of this game is gathering RNG, and even this quest is is gathering RNG. Um, you know, it's a percent chance to carve uh, that material that we're looking for off of the monster. And uh, even just going around and gathering from specific nodes, you know, Rosiana's going to be trying to gather for, uh, you know, like uh, thunder bugs and flash bugs and uh, stones. I know stones are a big part of this, mm -hmm. as well as all the materials that... Uh, you know, she's going to be needing for trapping and gathering. Um, one of the things, I guess I'll talk about it now, so when it comes up, um, we can. it's a little bit easier to talk about, but one of the main ways to gather resources in this game is through an NPC called the Peddler. And the Peddler is, uh, think of it as a shop, and the materials in the shop uh, circulate. They, they cycle through a couple different, uh, you know, types. Um, so there is a, a regular cycle, um, a sales cycle, and then the DLC cycle. And the DLC cycle is the one that we're going to be looking for. Um, but there can be two regular cycles, two sales cycles, but then only one DLC cycle. And so every single time that we're going to be coming back to Poke Village, kind of the hub of the game, uh, Rosiana is going to be checking with the peddler to see uh, if that DLC cycle has come up. That's where she's going to be buying the majority of her resources for uh, trapping and for bombing. Because uh, the main strategy in this game, especially when we get out of um, the rank one and rank two, is going to be sleep bombing. Mm -hmm. um, Shreddy, you want to talk about that? Sure. So sleep bombing is going to be, I guess, the main strategy for some of the more challenging hunts during this run. Some of the earlier hunts, you'll see Rosiana actually shooting down the monsters with that strong flaming shot on her light bow gun. But once we get into some of the quests with larger health pools or multiple monsters, a strategy that Rosiana is going to be employing is basically putting the monster to sleep and then waking up with bombs. Um, and a, a, core, a core thing about that is that in Monster Hunter, when a monster goes to sleep, the first attack that wakes them up, the first thing that hits them, is doubled in damage. And bombs are already worth a good chunk of damage. Small bombs, which you might see Rosie use a little bit, or I guess large barrel bombs, kind of medium-sized bombs, are worth 80 damage, and large barrel bomb pluses are worth 150. So you can get a lot of damage with bombs. Um, yeah, 
essentially that. Um, it's a pretty advanced strategy where, like, if you were going to be doing a if you're going to be doing a sleep bombing run on a monster, you'd need to bring quite a bit of materials with you, and you'd mm -hmm. probably make your armor set geared a certain way in the game. Like, if you were playing a regular character file in Monster Hunter, you'd kind of take some time to set that up and make sure you had all the materials and everything. Rosianna is doing that, but on the fly. On the fly, making yeah. sure that she has all the bombs, all the all the flash bombs, all the sleep ammunition, and backups for if something goes wrong, she can put down another trap, craft it up real quick, and put that down as a backup there. And something to really kind of say about this early routing and the sleep bombing technique itself: it's expensive. It is not cheap, and we're a brand new character that had that started out this game with a thousand zenny, and we don't have. <laughs> those kinds of resources mm -hmm. and nor are we going to grind for them either right um rosie's going to be keeping track of all of the uh the money uh that we make on each quest to make sure that she has enough for kind of her shopping points right the moments in, in which she's going to check for uh you know the the peddler to have specific um specific items like that dlc cycle in particular because this yeah. stuff is not cheap Mm hmm Totally. Rosianna said that in this in, in this run we love money. And then they <laughs> she went on to say, <laughs> money, 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 which is the theme of these early quests. These early few quests, like the Popo Tongue quest, and then this quest, which is the Gia Prey slaying quest, where Rosie has to slay five of these small little monsters here, these little raptors called Gia Prey. They're very weak to flaming shot. She can gun them down quite quickly with the gun. And then once she's done with doing that, you'll see her gather as much as she can. Um, essentially anything that she can sell. So stuff like armor, seeds, or any rarer materials that might pop up from some of these little gathering nodes are things she's going to be trying to scrounge up right now. So you can sell them to the peddler or use them in the crafting, as well as stones. Stones are really important because I don't believe you can get them from the peddler, or if you do, maybe you don't want to maybe you don't want to waste your any buying stones when you can get them out in the field. But stones are really important to be able to make some of the things like flash bombs and uh, and, and trank bombs that Rosie will need to throw at monsters pretty much constantly throughout the run. Is that four armor seeds already? <laughs> Is that? That's awesome RNG if so. That's <laughs> great RNG. It's a very generous plant. <laughs> very generous plant. Yeah, the armor seeds, we aren't going to be using them, but we're going to be selling them for just yeah. money. How much do those sell for? Um, I believe it's 150 Nice. Yeah, and every every scatter fish that you need to buy is 300 zenny each, and you need to buy a lot of those. So, I mean, mm -hmm. that's just a small bit that really helps out early. Yep. Each scatter fish is going to allow Rosie to have one large barrel bomb plus, so like 150 true damage that she can use for a monster mm -hmm. sleep bomb, that kind of thing. So you start to see the, the conversion there of like, okay, well, if I've got these seeds, that means I can get one more bomb, and every <laughs> single armor seed is really important. Yeah. Uh, and something to note, too, is that um, unlike the uh, Monster, Hunter, Monster Hunter games that are coming out now, some of your more modern ones, um, the end quest timer is always going to be this, this 60 seconds. Um, so at the end of every single quest uh, objective, um, you know, we have 60 seconds to gather. Uh, and that timer, uh, I think that timer like pauses a little bit uh, when you transition. I know at least it does in Genio, right? Uh, so it's it's 60 seconds of like active play time uh, to just gather as much as you possibly can. Mm -hmm. In these gathering quests, even as Rosie's kind of mainly beholden to the RNG and slaying some simple small monsters, there's still still little things that Rosie's doing to save to shave some time off. One of the things you'll see if she goes on up through the mountain here is there'll be a ledge coming up where Rosie has to climb this ledge, and the climbing animation is pretty slow in these old games. And so Rosie actually places down a barrel bomb to blast herself up over the edge, which isn't necessarily it's like so you don't funny. have to do it. It's so cool though; it saves just a little bit of time off, and it just looks. I think it's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> it looks great. Mm -hmm. Even e even in like a um, uh, single level speedrunning in IL's uh, you know single quest speedrunning of the older Monster Hunter games that have transition zones, they will use uh, you know small bombs while they're using you know like might seeds and like uh, in in quest buffs like consumable buffs mm -hmm. to push them through the uh, through the transition zone and skip those animations. And that's actually like one thing that Rosie did right there, which was not quite uh, obvious. It might not have been quite obvious to you. Um, but you can actually walk forward a little bit while you load um, the bow gun. And so she did that loading animation as she walked into a transition zone. She kind of like skipped that animation a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, it's a it's a small little time save. I I, I think of it more as a flex, <laughs> but it, <laughs> but it was still but it's always it's always still really impressive just to see that just like knowing like your positioning and your timing walking into these transition zones because some of the entrances are really vague. Mm -hmm. 
Yep, <laughs> they really are too. Knowing that specific <laughs> spacing to be able to pull off that neat little trick is no mean feat. Yeah. It's also be a slightly important for stamina usage because as I pull out the bow gun and go to the next loading screen, I'm going to be regaining some of my stamina. So the, the less time I spend jogging instead of sprinting, it obviously saves me more time to be sprinting all the way. So tiny little ways of regaining your stamina between loading screens is really important, just for saving those half a seconds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this is uh, like a Souls game in the sense that your stamina management is actually kind of important while you're navigating. Because if you run out of stamina entirely, you end up in this winded state, you stand perfectly still, it's really obnoxious, I do it all the time. <laughs> and uh, you just don't want to do that, you know? Mm -hmm. You want to really pay attention to your stamina usage and your stam stamina management. Mm -hmm. All right, so coming up in our next quest, after this Blongo one, this is the first example of something called an urgent quest. So we mentioned key quests, which are the quests that you have to complete in order to progress to the next rank. And once you do the key quests, like Rosie's just done here for one star quests, then you unlock an urgent. And the urgent quest is going to be kind of like the, the test quest to, to unlock the next rank of difficulty. And this one's going to be our, for our first test technically large monster, Giedrome. Just a little bit bigger than some of the other monsters Rosie's been fighting, but another raptor monster. It's a, uh, it's a raptor, but you put it into Photoshop, you hold, held shift, and you grabbed the corner of it, and you enlarged it a little bit. <laughs> mm -hmm. like, and you made it blue. Like 50%. <laughs> and you, made it, and you yeah. made it blue, yeah. <laughs> Gave him bigger fingernails, too. Creepily, he has like. Oh yeah, right. He, I don't know if y'all have ever counted his fingernails on on Gia Prey, or like I forget if it's just Gia Prey or if it's all of them. But he has like eight fingers, and they're terrifying <laughs> looking. They're awful. <laughs> Spooky. Yeah, just in time is. for October, we did it. <laughs> sure. So this is going to be the first example of something that'll be a factor for Rosie to care about all through the entire quest. And it's not going to play a big part of this, or sorry, all throughout the entire run. Rosie will have to worry about monsters HP rolls. In this quest, it's a pretty slow, it's a pretty low variance where it'll take between eight and nine shots of this flaming, of this flaming shot. So like just a little bit over one clip of bullets to take out this Gia drum. And that's not much of the, that was not much of a difference, but then you get towards the end of this run and you get some of the larger monsters where an HP roll can fluctuate wildly in terms of how many traps or bombs you need to use, and it starts getting a lot scarier. It's a big part of the run there. Look at his fingernails. They're so creepy. So, <laughs> random random trivia about his giant blue fingernails. In Freedom 2, they were red, which is the same color as a Velocidrome. So I don't know if they just forgot to paint his fingernails <laughs> blue in Freedom 2. <laughs> But yeah, he has red fingernails in Freedom 2. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they straight up just you shifted that creature. <laughs> so yeah, he's dead. So there you that's go. our first major boss. He's dead. <laughs> and um, I <laughs> went to split. So that's fun. Yay! <laughs> we knew it was going to happen. <laughs> that's okay. We'll keep it rolling. Yeah. No, oh, he, just, he just got his nails done and he didn't kill him. <laughs> That's that I'm one gonna, really long one in the middle. It's just so weird. <laughs> uh, it's the fact that he has that big long one, but then he really does have, I think, like three or four on either side of it. It looks creepy. Yeah, I don't it know. looks so weird. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, you can so, see like on the babies, they've got similar hands. <laughs> <laughs> yep. They're also being really mean and not letting you gather. Yeah, yeah it's, it's annoying, but what can you do? So between the sleep bombing and the early game where these monsters are pretty weak, someone might get the impression that like, what's the deal with these quests? You're like, just you just shoot the monster eight times and then it's dead. Well, an interesting aspect of this and why why bowgun, another reason why bowgun is such an advantageous choice for this speedrun is that bowguns are different in this game than pretty much every other type of weapon, and they're different than bowguns later on in the series too in other monster hunter games. So usually when you're upgrading a weapon, you actually have to take some money, some zenny, and some parts from a monster that you've gone and killed. Where if you wanted to improve a regular bowgun you might need to bring some like big bones from a later monster or some rare pieces of ore or something in free me night and i can't remember if it actually is in the games prior but the relevant one is in free me night the bowguns can be upgraded with just zenny so at the beginning of the game rosie went and she sold all of the equipment from the box all the other weapons all the armor everything so that she had enough money to dump upgrades into this light bowgun as early as possible which boosts its stats up to be pretty comparable with like i would imagine something at towards like the end of low rank i actually don't know exactly like how high it boosts the stats of it to dump upgrades into it early like that but it makes the bowgun comparatively much stronger than the other weapons that you could possess and craft this early in the game and so it's really useful and can kill monsters in like we saw, like eight shots. Selling a bunch of that stuff that we have been gathering uh, just to, I mean, acquire nearly 6,000 zenny. That's awesome. Uh, 
and then buying our upgrades here and some attachments. Bowguns are kind of unique. They can have silencers, longer barrels, uh, just different customizations that make them operate a little bit differently, giving them different kinds of like recoil and knockback, um, as well as changing their damage. Uh, so uh, I believe that was the silencer, uh, right? And the mm, scope? That, that should be a power barrel on that heavy bowgun, unless I'm oh, wrong. Oh, is that power barrel? It should be, more, yeah. More damage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, more damage. Yep, so that's what we want. Yeah. At this point, we're getting into some of the other larger monsters. You'll see uh, Yan Kutku is going to be coming up in this quest as our first real large monster. The Giyadrome was My technically boy. one, but Yan Kutku is our first real large monster here. And yeah, Rosie just switched over to the heavy bowgun from the light bowgun there. The light bowgun's nice for those early on quests because they're not super damage focused, right? You've got a lot of small monsters and it fires and reloads a little quicker. So in situations like where you have lots of small monsters and you need to blow through a lot of shots across the, the lot of them or you need to kind of get out of the way because they can move around kind of quickly sometimes, it's helpful to have that light bowgun. Now that we're getting into bigger foes, it's heavy bowgun time for a while. One thing I've got to say, just in the few moments that we have had cinematics in this game even even without the cinematics it just looks really really oh, nice yeah. this this game really stands <laughs> up well you wouldn't i mean 2008 was a strange time but it's still like i don't know it just looks really nice I'm super biased about these older PSP entries in the series because I spent a lot of time playing them and I really love them, but I really love how they look. On real hardware, on emulator, yeah. I think they stand up in a big way. A big part of that's probably art direction and the way the environments yeah, look with the actual creature designs and kind of how they actually would look like. Mm. This looks like some place where a Yan Kutku might actually land to eat some food or rest or get out of the rain or something. It just, I don't know, it goes a long way that it's very cohesive. Even if it's not super high fidelity, everything's put together in a way that does kind of sell this being a world. And I think that's pretty special. Yeah, yeah, definitely. My boy, Jan Cuckoo and his incredibly vague fireball hitboxes. <laughs> this is the first, this is kind of the first hint of what you'll see about like what this run will start to look like, where you can see Rosie starting to set up some traps and some bombs. And this is the first example of where you'll start to see like, okay, if you're starting to use more than just the bowgun shot itself, you're focusing on actually both doing some damage to the monster, but also trapping it and using some bombs to put it away. This is the first example of how you can set that up to kind of like, I don't know, I know Yan Kutku will have about this much HP, even with the HP rolls. I know I can do this much damage to it with this many clips of, of normal two shot, like what Rosie's firing right now. It's pretty impressive. It comes from a lot of practice and knowing exactly how they move around, how much health they're gonna have, how much damage you need to stagger it and make it flinch like that. And then like, I don't know how many bombs you'd need to actually make it weak and ready for capture. So unfortunately, he just blew up my yeah. bombs there because oh, no. he was having a tantrum. <laughs> but it's okay, we have the shock trap here as mm -hmm. a safety net. And he's dead. Nice. Yeah, the bombs there were a little extra damage in case he came forward a little quicker, but you kind of had good AI there where he was just standing perfectly still doing spins. Um, so you're able to get more damage off with the normal shot instead. Hmm. I miss this guy. I like Yan Kutku. <laughs> he's cute. He is. Yeah, you'll see You'll see Rosie continue to gather. Basically, at any time that Rosie can, she's going to be gathering stuff towards the end of the quest to sell. Some stuff like that special mushroom she just got, I believe account items get converted straight into Zenny at the end of a quest in this game. So even yeah. though you don't you don't even have to sell those at the peddler, those just are, are straight Zenny right into your, I guess, what, a bank account? A pouch? What do you think we keep <laughs> Zenny in? <laughs> right into your pocket. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Sure. <laughs> 7,000 right small coins <laughs> hanging out of your pockets. Trip once, just drop them all on the ground. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, so, I mean, besides the uh, the HP rolls, you know, um, those of you that might be familiar with Monster Hunter games, uh, size and location are also uh, factors in quests, but we kind of overlook the location aspect of that. Um, when you encounter a monster for the first time in uh, these games, they are accompanied with a cutscene first, kind of introduce you, introduce it, right? You know, when we were talking at the beginning of the quest, it was a, a little cutscene of Yan Kuku landing in this area. It was really neat. And um, because of that, they have a fixed location. They have a fixed spawn location inside that area, and their AI is a lot more predictable based because AI is based on your position and your actions in these kinds of games. Um, so Rosie is taking advantage of those cutscenes and the fact that they exist to set up these 
uh, you know, the, placing these traps and these bombs before the monster actually enrages uh, or, or engages with us. Um, if we don't have those, I was talking to Rosie about this, if we don't have that cutscene, it's actually faster to reset to still get that opener. Um, literally what you said, like close out of the game and then yep. restart that quest um, without having watched that cutscene yet. Uh, it's faster to do that than it is just to like try to hunt it normally. Uh, you know, ad libbing it because these these games can be, in, like, especially these earlier ones, right? Uh, it, it's spaghetti code, you know, to the max. It, they are not really designed um, with you know, you know with that with that level of ease in mind. So uh, we would rather avoid all of that uh, that RNG associated with it. So this is a rather somewhat infinite quest, or, sorry, infamous quest that Rosianne is out on right now. This is called Liver of Legend. It's another gathering quest oh where you need, to, you need to kill three of these cephalos and get their livers to drop, which is kind of a rarer drop. They don't drop it every time. But these guys also love to swim around constantly. They'll swim around in the sand. They'll shoot projectiles at you. They can paralyze you, I'm pretty sure. So these guys are real right jerks, and this quest can take a long time to complete. Rosianna has perfected some strats to, to, to give herself like as, base, as best a chance as possible to get these carves that she needs. So we'll see if she gets the livers here. Oh, we've got a friend. Oh, it's Gia <gasps> Drum. <laughs> the There's boy. One so we've got so, one. Yeah, this is Gendrum. He's basically just like a colored variation of the Gear Drum. Sometimes his walk cycle comes straight into our way. So unfortunately, we do have to run away from this area and move on because he will bother us the entire time. Mm -hmm. Yep. He can paralyze. He's pretty fast at moving around. And especially right now, something of note is while Rosie's doing these strats, placing down the bombs, placing down the traps, kind of knowing how much HP these monsters are going to have, Rosie has no armor on, which she's doing a yeah. lot of damage. But basically, it would only take basically one mistake or one really wrong thing happening to get kind of... I don't know, destroyed by the monster. So the stakes are high in terms of trying to play very carefully and make sure you're you're, you're avoiding those large monsters. Especially that right there, walking into this area and a cephalos just attacking the transition area and then throwing <laughs> that sonic bomb and another one whizzing past your screen. Mm-hmm. Cephalos jump scare. <laughs> yep. This game wants to get you. Oh, it does. <sighs> Let's see. I think Rosie's gotten at least one liver. I haven't seen if she's gotten two yet. I've gotten one, and I've gotten two scales. Mm. So this so, is not uh, super this is, expeditious. Yeah, in terms of RNG, this is as bad as it gets. This is the <laughs> yeah. quest that you hate. This is the quest that makes you want to speedrun this game. <laughs> and it's funny, they keep they keep putting this quest into any game that has Cephalos in it. Mm -hmm. Like, it's in it's in For You, it's in Gen U, it's in 3, it's in all of them. If it has Cephalos, have fun getting livers. Mm -hmm. They even put a Delix version of this quest in games where there where there aren't where there aren't specifically cephalos. There are other small yeah. little sandfish. They'll make you do it with those instead. <laughs> so anyone who have made have noticed my HP bar is slowly going down. So in the desert, we suffer from heat exhaustion, which makes us slowly die. So even though I'm not getting hit whatsoever, I'm on a timer. My life is currently on a timer, and if I don't hurry up, I'm gonna die. Do you even have healing items with you? No. <laughs> I, don't, I don't bring cool drinks either. Yep. Well, yeah, we can sell those for money. Why would we bring them? <laughs> oh, man. So this is pretty rough. That's okay. Yeah, that's not great. If you were on like, if you were, if you were sitting here and you were you were resetting every run to try and get like the perfect run on a tear to get your your PB or a world record, this would be kind of where oh, you might start to one. think about resetting a, a, a run like this. But not yeah. today. Not today. Resetting the areas like that, like leaving uh, them and then returning into them, it uh, respawns the small monsters? Uh, yes. Yeah, it respawns them and m most importantly, resets their behavior. I want to get them to do a specific attack where I can guarantee you where my small barrel bomb will get them out of the sand. Gotcha. Like this one. Here we mm -hmm. are. Got it. So earlier on, you saw oh. Rosie using sonic bombs, which you can kind of huck at the monster from a distance and get them to pop out of the sand. Now she's out of those. So she's had to fall back to a backup plan that she's got for this quest, where she has small barrel bombs. They take a second to blow up, and they, you can't throw them. They're very like localized, so you have to place them just so. So like Rosie was saying, she had to enter and exit the area there for a pattern that she recognized to be able to place down the barrel bomb with the exact like timing and spacing to get the carve and still not get the freaking liver. <laughs> Oh my goodness. These guys are being right jerks today. Yeah. 
I don't know. It's easy to look oh. at some of these quests when they when they go oh. like really really s quickly, and the monster just dies to the bow gun real quick, and go like, what's the deal here? But when you see stuff like that, when you see stuff like, okay, I'm entering and exiting this area so I can recognize this small monster AI that I'm looking for to place a specific small barrel bomb. It's so cool. I think I might be dead here. I was looking at that HP bar. It's getting I'm hoping really I can low. gather a liver before I die. Get it? Can you get, can you get the car? Oh. Oh. I got it. Yes! Hey! Oh my goodness. <laughs> oh that my was the clutch. biggest the biggest detriment to carding uh, in a quest, we call it carding because of, wait, did, does that animation in this game? Oh, yep, it absolutely yeah. is. <laughs> so this is why we call it carding, right? It's fainting. Um, HP is reduced to zero. The cats bring you back on a cart back to the uh, camp. Wow, I mean, honestly, that's pretty cool. Uh, that was a free farcaster. That was perfect timing. Yeah, that was, that a, free was a free farcaster. Far <laughs> the, yeah, so the only detriment to that is that we lost out on 400 zenny, which... Mm. Uh, I don't know how impactful that is for you, Rosie, but when, when money is as important as it is in a strategy like sleep bombing, uh, I don't know, it, it still feels kind of substantial. Um, not not ideal, but, you know, shouldn't be a problem. I've basically <laughs> traded my death for the Firecaster, so I don't have to buy another one later on. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. So for folks, then. Basically even. Yeah. Yeah. For folks who are new, the far caster so is an would... item that Rosie has right now that would just let her warp back to the box extra quickly. And so, well, Rosie got got killed there by the heat exhaustion. She got back to the box <laughs> for free. It's all good. It all works out. With those livers, do you, do they have like a particular drop rate compared to the other the other sort of things that you can collect off those uh, those enemies? Or yeah, so there's there's a specific you know, drop table for everything. It's a percentage. Um, you know, so every single time you carve, you have a percentage chance to get a specific item, and some are more common than others. What those exact numbers are, I have no idea. I don't know if Ristretto knows them. Um, I actually have the... Uh, I have He's a document. I have a document pulled up for it, but it doesn't have the chances. Ooh. It doesn't have the oh, chances on the card. Oh. I can see that you can I've... carve three other things from from the Cephalos, but I don't know what the chances are. From what I remember, livers are the enough. most common drop. Ooh. Oh my no. gosh, and you still weren't getting them. Oh no. <laughs> no it, it do be Monster Hunter. Good old yep. Desire Sensor is the is the strongest enemy in this game. Yep, that was absolutely a Monster Hunter moment right there. There, there are lots of Monster Hunter moments one can have, but that is absolutely one of them, where you're battling against not, not a big bad boss, you're battling against RNG and heat exhaustion, and you get your RNG just as your heat exhaustion takes you. That's a Monster Hunter moment right there. <laughs> and I'd say that was pretty clutch. I love that. <laughs> so which hunt is this? Uh, this is the Bulldrum. Bulldrum. Oh, boy. The monster <laughs> with two attacks. Got it. Yep. 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 Rosie Anna sent us some notes to prep for the for the commentary. Some nice, some nice notes. Talked mm -hmm. over one of her previous runs. And there were several occasions where she was like, yeah, this quest, once you get used to it, it's not too bad. You're just pressing the circle button to shoot them. It's, that's all it is. So for this one, I mean, like, like I said earlier, there's a lot of things that can go wrong here. But once you've got it down, once you've got the right equipment, you know how the quest is going to go, you can match some circle and it's going to be okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, see the, uh, I see the question in, in, in chat. Um, but this is going to go to six star uh, to the Shen Goren quest. Mm -hmm. And we will be beating Shen Garen. And if you have never heard of that monster before, don't Google it. Just be surprised. <laughs> like Jal is. <laughs> yep. like, like I am. <laughs> <laughs> we were saying that Jal, Jal had actually, has actually never seen like Shen Garen before, hadn't seen it before today, and has never seen this quest done. So it's kind of cool. Never seen this to game see. before today. <laughs> oh my gosh. Dude, well, we're giving you some culture. We're giving you some Freemanite night culture today. I know, because I didn't, I didn't start my Monster Hunter experience until, like, four years after this game came out, so... <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh-oh. Oh, <laughs> angry piggy. Yep, and like Rosie said, someone dropped the number in the chat of the, the percentage chance for those livers that Rosie was car carving. 60% chance, so not even, like, a 50-50, over 50% chance. <laughs> and the game was still like, nah, you get some scales. But wouldn't you rather make this armor? Mm hmm so that is actually something of note, is that Rosie made the battle armor. So all that stuff that Rosie's been gathering, all the all the monster parts that we've gotten so far, she's been selling along the way so she can have flaming shots, so she can start buying things from the peddler that she'll need for all the sleep bombs that are going to need to happen later on in this run. But another big milestone is getting enough zenny for the battle armor set, which I believe costs 7,500 zenny altogether. So that's like several quests yep. worth, where you, you really need quite a bit of zenny to afford all five pieces. And 
For anybody who's new to the series, the armor isn't just giving you defense, it's also giving you like actual buffs or skills that are going to activate. And I believe the battle armor has speed sharpening, but also but also attack up. And so for bowgun, attack up is a big deal. Not so much the speed sharpening. We don't sharpen our bowguns here. Uh, it says speed sharpening. We actually get um, quicker reload time. Ah, I oh, forgot about cool. that. Oh, right. Yeah, they, Man, they it's do been that. long enough. I forgot about this. So it's been long enough. I'm used to making the Blade Master battle set, the, the Blade mm -hmm. Master version of the armor that Rosie's got on right now, because I, I admittedly usually play Blade Master weapons. I don't gun as much as I should. But in the older games in the series, if you played some newer, newer games in the Monster Hunter series, like Monster Hunter World and Monster Hunter Rise, you have alpha and beta sets that have slightly different skills in Monster Hunter World. And in Monster Hunter Rise, you just have one armor pet armor set per monster. But in the older games, there was a split between Blade Master and Gunner weapon. Or sorry, armor, excuse me. So if you wanted to make like an armor set for your gunner, and you wanted to make an armor set for your, your blade master, your like sword user, you'd need to actually make two different sets of armor. And sometimes they have different skills where the gunner version of this armor set, the battle set, has reload speed up, like Rosie just mentioned. So that's one big milestone of the, of the run past, is that we've made it past Liver of Legend, and she's gotten her, her, her <laughs> battle armor all set up. We have a run. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're past the hardest quest. Sure. And in like a regular Monster Hunter playthrough, if you were sitting down, you were kind of meandering your way through this village, you might make a couple different armor sets, maybe one for gathering, mm -hmm. one for one weapon, one for another. I'm pretty sure that, I mean, obviously Rosie started off with no armor at all for most of those quests. And then I think this is the armor we're going to take all the way through the run at this point. So that's it. Yeah, this is it. This is my armor for the entire game. Mm hmm. So, Rosie, how are we looking on on money, right? Because the money management is the the bigger thing in the in the one star and the two star. How how are you feeling about money so far? Um, I've had a lot worse, but I've also had a lot better. <laughs> so, kind of in the middle. Very, very middling. Um, yeah. <laughs> expectation here, perfect for for a marathon showcase. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I think. Um, Surprisingly, not getting the livers helped me out a lot because the extra items I was g gave me a lot of money. Yeah, hmm. that's what I was thinking too, right? Cool. Is that the that's kind of like a double edged sword, right? <laughs> oh, cool! This is going to be our first example of a uh, ledge strat. Mm -hmm. Correct. Yeah. So everyone, say hi to Kongalala. I love him so uh, much. He, he's 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 a very special. Very unique monster. He eats mushrooms and gains different uh, elemental attacks, and also has a uh, unique con uh, a unique status called Stench, uh, <laughs> where he farts. Uh, anyways, uh, this is Ledge Strat. Because we're a ranged weapon, we can stand wherever we want and uh, and shoot the monster. And uh, you know, Kongawala is a monster that's going to deal a lot of damage, even though we have that upgraded armor. Um, this guy hits hard. And we don't really have the other resources to really lock down the monster right now. So we're going to take advantage of this ledge being here. <laughs> so by standing in this position, and Rosiana knows the kind of AI to look out for, um, we can more or less cheese the position uh, of the Kongalala. So it is still going to try to attack us, but it can't quite reach us. Um, there's one like jumping attack that he can do where he'll land up on the ledge, uh, but Rosie can just dodge to the right uh, and entirely avoid it, then the Kongo will jump back down and continue doing this. Oh, he got me there. That's okay. I did not think that was going to get up. Uh, yeah, I thought the invisible wall was going to cover me. Yeah. Um, but once he jumps up, he jumps back down. This and is actually a pretty... Can continue. This is a pretty interesting monster where Rosianna talked about in the notes for us about how most monsters, when they're weak, they will limp away or they'll start to kind of limp away and still have a good tell to, to shoot them a few more times or to try and capture them, blow them up with the last few bombs and finish them off. Kongalala, Kongalala doesn't actually have a really good tell like that. Instead, he'll sniff a little bit. He'll sniff before leaving the area. And so Rosie's got it down where Rosie has a specific number of, of shots and, and also cluster shots that you might see her start using here in a little bit where she'll know how many clusters it takes exactly before he's probably going to be weak around his uh, his HP roll. And so she doesn't have to wait for him to leave the area. She doesn't have to wait for him to like visibly jump away to signify that he's weak. She just is able to calculate that and know, which is pure experience. Yep. So for this run, I'm actually um, not going to be using the cluster shots. I'm just going to be using flaming ammo. It's something I've been testing the last couple of days, and it's sometimes guaranteed me a very quick kill. Nice. So something I can shoot through to... this wall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Old Monsanto. What wall? What are you talking about? 
I was about to say, I'm, it's, it's so casual. It's just like, oh yeah, we just do this. Yep. This is something that like affects me to this day, where it's not just the player. Monsters in the old games can shoot through walls sometimes. Mm. Uh, and oh even goodness. in the newer ones, when, there, when there's walls and like the projectiles af like, are affected by the walls accurately, where the projectiles won't go through the walls. Queen kill, Rosie. Nice job. Nice. I'm still scared of that stuff in the new games. I'm still oh, yeah. scared that a projectile is going to shoot through the wall, even though I know it won't. I know that fireball isn't going to come through the pillar or through the tree or whatever it is, but I'm always bracing for it. Even still, I always flinch. <laughs> <laughs> is that Valhazak beam going to clip through this wall and kill me in one shot? Probably. <laughs> Am I going to test it out? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Oh, yeah, you have to. have to put it all on the line. Oh, yeah. So Every hunt is just another reason to test. <laughs> Kangalala, he has a very unique death animation where he'll like flinch his body out when while he's dying. And the fun thing about that is it actually does damage. So technically, mm -hmm. you could die to him as he's dying. I'm trying to think about if, if I've ever had that happen to me. I don't think I have. I think I've been close sometimes, but I can't remember a time where I've actually been carded by the Kongalala in his death animation. Usually it's after, it's after the quest ends, so you're not going to be damaged by it and die. But in a multi-monster quest, let's say you were hunting like a Kongalala and a few other monsters, you could die to that and it would be a bummer. Yeah. <laughs> that death rattle getting you. Uh, so something something to make note of too, uh, which I don't think we talked about, um, but where we attack the monster, like uh, uh, where where we aim the shots on the monster, actually does make a difference on how much damage that we deal. Um, during that entire quest, uh, Rosiana was aiming for Kongalala's head. Uh, that's the best hit zone um, that takes the most damage from the flaming shot. So you just want to make sure that we keep aiming there. And for the most part, we're going to be you know, I mean, I mean for, for the most part, I'm pretty sure it's just the head on all these monsters for the, the bow gun. Um, but we do have to make sure that we are hitting those zones and not other ones like the leg or the wing or the tail, um, or maybe a zone that would resist that damage uh, so we can make sure we finish uh, the quest with the resources that we have. Mm -hmm. That's one of the strengths of bombs. That's one of the things that's pretty important about mm -hmm. bombs is that bombs will deal the same damage no matter where you hit the monster. They're called true damage, where it's just an explosion. and It'll deal damage kind of equally whether you're hitting a really hard part, like a monster's like plate or, or like scale or something, or whether you're hitting it on the head or the wing or something softer. There are going to be some examples later on in the run where it's still important where you place the bombs because dealing damage to different parts can sometimes trip monsters in different ways, and you'll start to see some of that in a bit. But in general, the bombs are really nice because it doesn't matter if the monster is really weak to fire or really weak to shot type damage, that bomb is going to get you the damage that you need. So <laughs> we're going to bring a lot of those along. Oh, yeah. And a lot of ways to make more. Mm -hmm, yeah. That's the other thing, too, is that we can only have two of these bombs in our inventory at a time. So you'll see that uh, as, as Rosiana places the two bombs, once they detonate, she makes two more in her inventory. Um, and crafting in this game is very... Uh, Arbitrary? I, I want to use that word because they don't tell you what the actual recipe is. You got to figure that out. <laughs> Which I One always loved about the older games. It's like, I'll be sitting there with like a barrel and I'll be like, all right, now what can I combine this with? And I just start going through my inventory and clicking on everything, trying to figure it out. <laughs> Once you have once you have crafted it once you do you do get a reference of it. There's a crafting list you can refer back to, but you have to oh, have cool. done it once just by happens chance. <laughs> yeah, and you also have to have uh, bought the combo book so you can still do it. Mm -hmm. So this quest is against the Kazu. If someone's not played Monster Hunter, like if this is the first time you're seeing Monster Hunter, this guy's a little weird. He's a little weird looking. And this guy is a little bit infamous for being a live player's first wall in the series. It depends on what game you started with. But this guy, he doesn't move all that fast, but he just has a lot of weird things he can do. He can scream, he can he can, he can paralyze you briefly with thunder, and he does a lot of damage usually compared to the, the other monsters that he's around. Now, Thankfully, this is another example where, where Rosie gets to, to practice a ledge strat. And I think for Kezu, I'm pretty sure Rosie, Rosie told us in her notes that for Kezu, you can position up here where you're totally safe from all of his attacks. And so this quest is quite straightforward. Yeah, 100% safe. That's actually Except for awesome. this guy. Oh, oh no! Guy of Prey, no! There you go. The Get little guys are annoying. Here. But besides that, it's a very straightforward <laughs> quest. Sometimes the Kezu kills him, kills the Gear Prey on his own. Yeah. <laughs> What's uh what like really threw me for a loop um was in that that kind of commentary notes that Rosiana provided us when 
she started this, I was like, wait, he's about to do this thunder attack. It's going to go up the ledge and hit. No, it doesn't do that. It does nope. in, the, in, the, in the more <laughs> modern games, right? Like in Rise, it does that. It travels up the wall, around the cave, all the way back around again. It goes anywhere it wants to go. In this game, nope. Wall just gets rid of it. He nope. just can't get up here. This poor dude. He's trying and his best. Bless him. Yeah. That's oh, the scary part. Heart. <laughs> that's the scary part too, where like normally this guy is really a fearsome foe, where if you didn't have the damage to do this, like even normally if you hadn't upgraded your bow going all the way, if you weren't bringing the right damage, you might not have enough damage to just sit up here and do this before he'd leave the area and you wouldn't be able to do this ledge strat. But especially with other weapons where you have to be down on the ground with him, he does so much damage oh, yeah. for this point in the game. He can one shot you, I'm pretty sure, with a couple of his moves and it's just really spooky. So this is a very nice way of dealing with an early Kezu, I'll say that, a very nice way. <laughs> Also, Don't you just um, love his fighting theme? I was, I was just about to bring that up, actually. <laughs> Kezu has no theme for his battle because um, the Kezu is blind, so if the monster cats see you, it won't have a battle theme. Mm -hmm. All the other monsters... I, I love that, I love that yep. logic. That's All the other cool. monsters, when they see you, that's when the music kicks in. The rest of the time, you're kind of left with just a little bit of environmental noise when you're walking around the maps in this game or in the series, but Kezu doesn't have one. There is actually a single quest in Monster Hunter Freedom 1 in the old jungle, where if you go and you fight him, it'll play the jungle battle theme for no particular reason. There's, <laughs> not, there's no other difference. It's one single quest. The other Kezu quests in that game don't have that battle theme. It's one quest where you actually get to hear Kezu's theme. Do you think, like, in the game code, there is a Kezu theme, but because of exactly that, like, developmental choice, because he just never sees you? <laughs> That'd be so weird. I mean, that they would have be, found it by now. Would so they would have pulled it out right? and been like, this is it, the Kezu theme, we found it. <laughs> it's buried it's too deep in the spaghetti code. Capcom. Like, oh no, we forgot to add eyes. <laughs> they're, 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 they're never going to hear this theme. <laughs> <laughs> we forgot the eyes code. <laughs> It's like That'd that, uh, you ever see the walrus, like, visual range meme where it's like the cones coming out of the walrus's eyes? It's all I'm pi picturing right now. <laughs> no, I've not. Scanning. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Oh, boy. Ledge strats, though. Yep. They're Beautiful ledge strats. Really funny. <laughs> and that's not even, like, the... Because, like, those are... The ledge strat is, like, a really easy way to cheese some of these fights, but legitimately, I think, what, those are the only two hunts that you really use ledge strats on, and then everything else is now going to be sleep bombing. Yeah, uh, there are no more ledges that I can take advantage of. Now I'm in the mix. I have to play the game. Oh, dang. <laughs> Truly a tragedy. Even, even those ledges, though, we're like you're, we were talking about the Kongalala one. Even both those ledges, you saw there were small monsters that were bothering Rosie at the same time. In the jungle, there were those Vespoid, the little big wasp-looking guys that can paralyze you and they get in the way. They mm -hmm. flinch you. They 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 take your shots instead of hitting the monster, and they'll hit the hit the bugs instead. And in the in the in the frost, sorry, in the in the snowy mountain there, uh, you could see the the Gia prey jumping up there on the ledge and bothering Rosie. So even then, there was still potential to get like knocked off the ledge or paralyzed and then get hit by the monster. So even then, you're not safe from free night it's gonna get you <laughs> it's gonna get you mm -hmm. yep. In invariably eventually it will happen it didn't happen in this run thank goodness but i bet there's been some times where the game has gotten rosy even on those ledges <laughs> absolutely more than i can count yeah sure so this is another good checkpoint that Rosie mentioned in the in the notes about this is another good Zenny checkpoint where there's gonna be more and more combos coming up as we start getting into some of the sleep bombs and just a couple quests here. And so now is a good time for Rosie to start buying combination books, which are also quite expensive. I think if you were to buy them all together, like they're like eight thousand Zenny, so that's even more than what our yeah. armor set cost. But I, did you go ahead and did you buy one of the combo books there, Rosie? Uh, I bought combo box one and two. Awesome. Yep. In the example run that we were watching for the for the notes, you bought combo book three. And if this is too much to explain right now, let me know. But I was curious why you bought three then and not one and two together like this. I, I I'm not I'm not well versed in like okay, buying three gives you this like advantage in terms of percentage, whereas one and two gives you this this percentage. Um, it's basically just how much money I have and how much I'm willing to spend at this point in time. If there's something, if there's a different item which I drastically need at this point, and I don't have the money to spare then I won't be able to buy those more expensive items. But if I've got the money, then I should. Gotcha. So coming up here is is Gypsaros, who's quite the unique monster. You could, I think unique is a great way of describing him, honestly. Probably the, mm, the primary way of describing him. I would use other colorful words. <laughs> <laughs> 
I believe in the notes, this was referred to as the devil, the devil yep. incarnate, That's something like that. That's yeah, Rose- the one. <laughs> <laughs> Rosiana does not like gypsy rose, but this quest should be pretty straightforward with, there's not any super big bomb strats or sleep bombing that's going to occur quite yet. This is another quest where gypsy rose is weak enough to flaming shot that Rosiana is going to gun him down just using that. Ooh, cheeky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the real, the real like fun of this quest, fun being stressed there on purpose, is that he can poison you, he can jump on top of you and flinch you there. He's got some pretty large hitboxes on his tail. He can do a flash with that crystal that's on the top of his beak. He clicks it together with the top of his beak to generate kind of like a flash, almost like a flint and tinder, and it can blind you briefly. And it's it's all around kind of a... I don't know, Rosie said in the mix a few moments ago about being in it with the monsters. This is a good example of a fight where you're kind of in the mix the whole time. This quest gives me so much anxiety just watching it. <laughs> I have a soft spot for Gyps Rose. I don't even know why. I just I, do. I, just, I want to know. I need to know. I mean... Because we were talking about Kongalala Death Rattle. This thing literally just plays dead halfway oh, through yeah. your hunt. You're like, is it, is it dead? But then you don't get like the quest complete. You don't get the quest ending music. It's just lying there. And then it death rattles and does half of your health. Mm-hmm. True. That's one of the most unique aspects of this monster is that it's the only one in the series. So they'll, they'll play dead. It'll actually fall over and look exactly as if it had died. You can even walk up and try and carve it. But the quest isn't over. The timer, like the, the quest complete timer isn't ticking down or anything like that. You have to know that that's that's a trap. I'm not going to walk up there and carve because he will wake up and do a lot of damage to you if you, if you start yeah. touching him. tragic that we have to fight another one of these hey <laughs> there we go that's so, nicely uh, done rosie while you were um listing out the things that it can do the endless possibilities that this lovely monster can do you forgot to bring up the best part gyps rose can also steal items oh, oh yeah. yeah i forgot Completely about that forgot about that. yep <laughs> wait which is, does he have a tongue attack that that steals the items which one is it because i don't think it's we saw it did we it's his jumping peck. So if yeah. I was unlucky, he could have stole my combo book too, which is 3,000 zenny straight out of my pocket. And you don't get those items oh, wow. back. <laughs> He's wow. a very unique guy. I completely forgot about have, that. Have you had that happen before? In yes, a I've had the more expensive oh book, combo book three, and he stole it straight out of my hands. So it's 5,000 zenny down oh the drain. So I was reading that. <laughs> <laughs> where did you put it? It's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Just ripping open the gypsy rose at the end. Where did it go? <laughs> Give it back. Like when you're trying to get like a, like when the cat or dog has put something in its mouth it's not supposed to and you're trying to dig in there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let go. Let Drop go it. of it. Drop the book. <laughs> I've swallowed it. <laughs> now what? <laughs> Make me. Yeah. Cock's heavy bow gun. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Well, at this point, we're about to dig into the actual sleep bombing of the quest pretty soon here. I guess uh, not quite. We have a couple more quests. Yeah, just a couple more filler quests, and then we're getting into the real juice of the run. Mm-hmm. Something that Rosie mentioned here in the notes is that one of the ways that another another quick tr- another like nice little optimization nice little trick is that in, in, in a few quests here i'm not sure if she's going to do it during this quest or the next one she'll be switching back to light bowgun and normally if you don't have any business in the house like you're not going to go put stuff away in the box that's in your in your hunter's house you'd have to go all the way back there to switch weapons you'd go back you'd enter a menu you'd switch over to the other weapon what you can do if you're going to stay out here and if, you, if you're if you going to switch weapons is you can actually apply a silencer or a power barrel to your bowgun and it gives you the option to switch right here at the, at the smithy. So you'll see her do that right here. She switched right over to the light bowgun, which normally you're not so able to cool. do. In the newer games, you're able to do that just when, almost whenever you'd like from the smith, from any of the item boxes. They give you a lot more ways to do that. It's very convenient. But in the older games, you got to do it either at the smith with an upgrade like Rosie just did, or you got to do it back at the house. This uh, this series has another moniker, another nickname, and it's Menu Hunter <laughs> because of just how much, even just casually, you have to go through, you have to menu through all the things that you have to check, all all of the uh, the fun tax that you have to do between quests. Uh, menu Hunter has always been kind of the the idea that we are fighting the menus in between the quests too, right? And in RTA speedrunning, it's one of those things that you have to think about to really cut down on time. 
you know, because taking the time to go back to the to the room to equip that weapon instead, it it does take up a significant amount of time between loads and just menus menus loading. It's just everything, right? Like it, it just takes a while. Mm -hmm. um, so, getting creative in RTA speedrunning on how to approach all of these uh, these menus and and how to creatively equip and gather the things that you need. It's just one of the more unique things to 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 these games for sure. Yeah. It's it's part of the practice of it where when when you're doing a, a real a full game speed run like this and you do have to do a lot of menuing for the crafting for the upgrading for putting things away selling things it's something you you genuinely have to practice and, and get a little more used to not not oh, yeah. just so that you like actually fly through the menus with quick speed and rem and like and and quickly zone through the different the different pages sell what you need get back out again but also just remembering everything that you need to do in between quests like the item play like the item play of actually using the items in the quest is one thing but actually switching between those items and selling the ones you need and buying the things you need and keeping track of all those material costs is really important and actually quite difficult. I, I do a little bit of that. Like when I've practiced a different RTA speedrun, I've done a tiny little bit of that. And I was really bad at it. I would always end up forgetting something and I'd be like, oh shoot, I'd be out in the middle of a quest and I'd be like, oh no, I forgot <laughs> to buy this specific material. My whole strat's dead. Oh, I guess I'll try oh, again next run. <laughs> Wait, what do you mean? Your your games don't give you an item pack and a uh, redeemable <laughs> weapon and armor that is best in slot for the entire low rank and high rank portion of the games? What are you talking about? They're just not quite as designed around <laughs> speedrunning for us, I guess. Not quite as kind. No, no gifts Maybe. from from Papa Riozo like that. Oh, thank you, Papa Riozo, for giving me defender weapons in World and Rise. <laughs> So this is a Blongo quest that Rosie just finished off where just some flaming shot, kill some more small monsters. Switching back to light bowgun for this is nice because like we said earlier, it shoots a little bit faster, reloads quicker, you can move around a little bit easier with it. Makes it nice and easy to make sure that nothing goes awry here in this quest and then just gathering a little bit more. Sell all that stuff, get some stones for the all the different types of things Rosie's going to need to throw at the monsters. Ristretta, are you getting a little triggered too every time she gathers uh, an item and that, that notification noise plays? Oh, no, why? I'm getting a little stream PTSD because I know you use them for not stream notifs too. Oh, I don't think I have the item <laughs> notification for any of them. Oh, I no? have a couple other different ones. But yeah, it does happen to me where, I mean, I'm sure this happens to lots of different Monster Hunter streamers, Rosianna included, where there's mm -hmm. there's different there's different sound effects in the games for like quest complete or you found a rare item or there's nothing left or you, like you found an item or whatever it is. And definitely if you have one of those as part of your stream and you've streamed for a little while it's like used to, you're used to it in your head you'll hear it in the game or you'll hear it while you're like listening to the ost on youtube or something you'll be like oh yeah. my gosh i just got a raid or like oh no someone just subbed or whatever it is <laughs> i keep looking to the my, to my right monitor every single time <laughs> you pick up an item <laughs> the streamer tick just like looking over there like what? who did it uh, the worst one for me is when i'm watching someone else like play a monster hunter game or do a speed run a cutscene will end, and I will reach for my controller, thinking that <laughs> right. the cutscene's done, and it's my turn to play. <laughs> I've definitely split on somebody watching somebody else run, <laughs> like play the game. I've definitely split at the end of somebody else finishing a hunt. <laughs> it happens. That's that's terminal speed run break. <laughs> <laughs> Not well. <laughs> oh man. So what's the, what is our next quest? We, oh, it's a gathering quest. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just 10 mushrooms, very simple. It's just oh, it's the mushroom quest. One. Yeah. yeah. Yep. This is our first time going out to forest and hills, or the verdant hills, if you're used to it from Monster Hunter Generations mm. Ultimate. No, no, this no. This is the original, <laughs> the original Monster Hunter map, the one from Monster Hunter 1. It's the map that I think has appeared in, in the most games in the series, because it's been in mm -hmm. all the first gen and second gen games. And then it also has appeared in Generations Ultimate as well. So you see this map quite a bit with a lot of different monsters on it. Thinking about that egg quest in MH1 now. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> good is not what I would call it, but <laughs> I like egg quests off, too. I guess. <laughs> Interesting. An experience. It's an experience, yeah, for sure. An egg now, experience. Yep. Rose. <laughs> Rosie's mentioned that several of these gathering quests in a rare in a rare example of kindness in Freebie Night from the game developers, there, several of these gathering quests seem to have tweaked drop rates from like any other quest. Where if you were normally to come out to the forest and hills and gather some mushrooms, you would not nearly you would you would get not nearly as many of the unique mushrooms that this quest is for. So for a gathering quest like what Rosie's doing right now, she's not killing a certain number of monsters. She has to gather a specific amount of of special mushrooms like what she's getting here. And then I think yeah, you have to far cast back to the the base 
base camp and drop them off at the box. Um, other quests might not really give you quite as many of those. You might have to run around the map a bit more, but especially for this one, and I think later on for a coal quest as well, the, the developers have been kind. They've uh, they've given us a quest where you just kind of have to go in and, and gather a little bit. It's kind of a nice introduction to a new map. You get to look around mm -hmm. it for the first time and learn the layout before you actually are tasked with hunting something there. Yeah, it's nice that they aren't like, here, here's a brand new entire locale. Now go fight God. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> Very kind of them. <laughs> yeah. This is all kind of leading up to our first sleep bomb quest, though, which is coming next. And so this is our final Very chance to, to gather stuff up, check the peddler for any extra supplies, anything like that. There was a Who monster was the on friend? the map there. Yeah, I was going to say, know. there's someone there. Oh, that was Yen Kuku. Mm -hmm. Oh, the friend. Yeah. Wait, do even the gathering quests, like uh, the the quests that you turn in to the box, do those also have a minute end timer? Mm-hmm. Wild. Yep. Yep. <laughs> oh, lots of I really garbage. thought you wanted a minute to stand here, huh? Well, it's a nice opportunity. Rosie was talking in the, in the notes about how she has specific like organization she'll do to her inventory. She'll mm -hmm. move stuff around so that it's easy for her to menu. Like for for folks who haven't played the series, when you when you go out on a quest, you bring a certain number of items with you. Let's say you're only allowed to bring two bombs at a time, but you can also bring the materials to craft more bombs. That's one of the things that Rosie's making sure is all set up for her sleep bombs. Is she has bombs, but she also has materials to make a whole lot more bombs if she can. Um, and you have to go into your menu. You have a page of three item. You have three pages of items that you can carry with you in your item pouch, and you have to kind of menu back and forth between those and combine together the different pieces to make more bombs on the fly. And so Rosie's rearranging things in her inventory in her item pouch, so that it's nice and easy for her to go through and and make more of those while fighting the monster, while avoiding the monster, that kind of thing. That's another way in which menuing is pretty demanding. Is you don't always get to sit there and just do the menuing without a monster on you. You actually have to sometimes do it in the middle of combat too, and it's it's definitely something to get used to. Yeah, especially in these older ones and like being a gunner, like even just playing casually, there were some instances using bow gun and uh, using any bow gun where you would have to craft more ammo mid hunt, like while you're fighting the thing. Mm -hmm. I just always thought that was so, so wild, that muscle memory that, that people have. Yep, for opening up the menu and crafting more. Just like wh right after a monster is done and moves, so you have just enough time to craft your shots that you need. Yeah. One thing, one thing I do have to inquire about is that pig that we uh -huh. just saw on screen that's like walking around the yep. hub world mm. what's i mean it looks like a very polite chap but i'm wondering what's going on with him what's did, does he serve a purpose in the game he controls our, the, all the rng he's he's the god of rng mm -hmm. in the game it's very it's very true oh, understandable yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep you can walk over and, and give him a nice pet and then then obviously your rng will be much better mm-hmm this is documented in, in several, I guess, almost two decades worth of forum threads now. You can actually go back and, and look at a, uh, a, a long-standing tradition and, and <laughs> a log of all the RNG that, that the, the, the RNG god Poogie has affected over, over the years. His name is Poogie, by the way. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolute blessed chap. Yeah. What a, what a, what a guy. Well, in my case, he's just an annoyance if he steals one of my text boxes. Mm -hmm, yep. Yeah. <laughs> Slightly too close to the uh, to the the peddler there, and you talk to him instead. <laughs> so for folks who are sitting here going, wait a second, the run's over? No, this is not the big crab. This is Daimyo Hermitar, and this is going to be the first monster that we actually get a sleep bomb strategy on. So he always approaches like that, just reversing back up into Rosie, and she kno she knows to stagger him with barrel bombs and immediately be begin sleep shotting. It takes six sleep shots to, to, to sleep most of the monsters in this run. So there Ooh. he goes. He's falling asleep. It's our first one. And, and this, so this is always point, so impressive to me. Just mm -hmm. always so impressive. Yeah. At this point, Rosie will go ahead and place the bombs a specific distance away, which gives her t space to go ahead and put down the trap just where Hermitar falls over. And Rosie's done this enough times now where she knows one more bomb and a couple Trank bombs should be enough for this guy's HP rolls. So she throws those Tranquilizer bombs, which puts the, uh, the crab to sleep. And that's the end of the quest. I... Love it so much. Wow. <laughs> so, and, and the thing the thing to take away from this is that we're we're dealing 150 damage per bomb. One of those bombs is going to deal double damage because uh, because it's going to deal the damage of the wake up. Uh, we used how many bombs there? Two, four, five, and then two small bombs. Mm -hmm. Something like that. So really, really effectively six, which is three, six. Hold on, am I stupid? Three, <laughs> six. Good. 900 damage. 
<laughs> Something like that. Yeah, close to 900 damage just mm-hmm. in uh, the the large barrel bomb plus. I don't know enough about this game to say this for, for a fact. I don't think that's intended. <laughs> what, you being able to kill them that quickly like that? You being able to... I don't think they ever expected you to have large barrel bomb plus this early. I mean, I figure that they could expect some players would go through the trouble of, like, getting a large barrel bomb or two to bring with them. Maybe they have enough material for, like, I don't know, a dozen or so in their box. So if they have a tough quest, they bring a few with them. They probably did Mm -hmm. not expect people to lab stuff out quite like this, where that was so fast, you may have missed some of the nuance, like, some of the the finer nuances of it. But that was placing bombs exactly where the monster aggros onto Rosianna so that as soon as the monster walks over, it staggers and it's ready to get slept. And then as soon as it gets slept, the bomb's with exactly the right spacing so she can walk over and place the trap where it falls over from the second set of bombs and just kind of looking at that positioning to make sure that each of those things was spaced just so so that the monster didn't have a chance to dig or run around or hit Rosie because again they deal quite a, they deal quite good damage mm-hmm. uh, that's the really impressive part is it's fast and the fast is very impressive too but like the spacing and the knowledge of exactly how much damage is required to make the monster fall specific ways and trip into traps is where this run goes really hard and so you're going to see some of that here yeah, especially some of the, the the quests coming up because you're you're positioning bombs in a certain way, or you're timing out bomb placement and trap placement, so you still get the wake up before the trap is actually active, or you're flinching or staggering the monster into the trap, or you're positioning it in a way that the monster enrages after the bombs that it steps into the trap. It's all very very clever and creative, and I mean it's it's probably gonna be hard for for Ristretto and I to pick up on it. I don't know, Ristretto, you probably can a little bit more, but Rosie, I don't know if you want to try to like point those out when they happen. Some of the some of the more nuanced little trips and positioning points yeah. like that. Yeah. Some it's of them so are the, wild. Some of them were in the notes, and so I have them written down. Mm-hmm. I'll be able to kind of oh, point out okay, a few cool. of them. But I bet Rosie will be able to point out. I mean, Ro- Rosie has uh, some kind of like wealth of knowledge of that stuff in her brain, just from hours and hours of sitting here and I mean getting bullied by the game, but then learning through that yeah. trial to bully the game right back. Yeah. So um I guess I'll go ahead. Um the this fight here is the next urgent quest of this star, and it's called the Blonganga. Very nice name. But um, there's a very niche sort of tech you can do where if I fight him in a certain space of the area, when he gets angry, he's not able to respawn a Blongo. And that's why, I, even though it seems dangerous to fight him in a tight corner, I'm fighting him in there just so he can't respawn a small monster that would bother me when I'm trying to put him to sleep. Yep, these small monsters specifically are are, are very tr- problematic. You'll see them in just a minute here. There's going to be a bigger version called Blangonga and then smaller version called Blangos. And we've had a couple quests where we fought Blangos, the small ones, already. Um, and they're especially dangerous for sleep bombing because they can throw little projectiles. Those little projectiles can wake the monster up. And when they do, you lose that opportunity to deal double damage to the monster, which is pretty big. But they can also... They can also blow up the bombs themselves. They can really screw up your, your plans. It's something to really watch out for. So that kind of risk of fighting the Blangonga, the big guy, over in a corner so that he can't spawn one extra of those monkeys is a big deal. And I think Rosie mentions doing another trick to try and get one of those little guys out of the way as well, where in this cutscene, it spawns three of those little Blongos, I think it was. And then right after this cutscene, you'll see, you'll see Rosie duck in and out of the area if she does the same strat. Yep right out of the area like that, <laughs> and then right back in again. And that despawns one of them. Monkey gone for free. No bullets spent. Nothing. Goodbye. <laughs> <laughs> Slain. <laughs> mm-hmm. So each one of those little monkeys you see is a big risk to this sleep bombing operation where we need to make sure that we sleep the monster and the bombs are the thing that wake them up. So the one far away is probably safe to, to leave where it is, Rosie's. Rosie's decided. But that small one, the other one, needs to get dealt with before any sleep bombing can occur. So right now, he's right on the edge of her range. She should be able to get him here, and he should be dead now. So now the sleep bombing can commence. She's going to go ahead and put down the bomb. She's got Blangonga in a trap. This is a little tight on time here, but those should go off and hit him. Yep, right back into him. He rages, and here comes the sleep. This guy was my first wall in generations. So I I, mm-hmm. I feel like I have an affinity for a lot of these monsters, but this guy was one of my first walls where he's just really fast and mean compared to a lot of the other monsters that you that you encounter. He's very aggressive. Very cool looking monster too. Like I always thought his design was like really unique, especially because we only have like two other, you know, ape gorilla monsters. 
So we ate a hit there, but it's okay. Didn't get followed up on, and there is the sleep. Beauty. And so something to note about um, the sleep status is that every monster kind of has its own duration that it'll stay asleep. And for the most part, that's not really a problem. Uh, the majority of the monsters are asleep long enough that, you know, you can do this setup uh, pretty safely. Um, the bigger problem is, is going to be a monster later who likes to wake up quickly, um, which we'll talk about it when we get there. Nice cheeky shock wow. trap in the path that, that was Rosie perfect. knows it's oh, going got it. to get the cap. Incredible. That was awesome. No extra so, damage, too. That was great. Yep. Rosie talked about how she was placing the trap there specifically so that if Blangonga starts to limp away, so we haven't actually seen a monster limp away yet, I don't think, but when a monster gets weak, when it gets low on its HP in this game, it, you don't have like a health bar to tell how much health the monster has left. And so instead, the monster will limp away to another area. You'll start to see it get angrier faster and faster when it's low on HP, and you'll see it run away and limp like that. And when they limp away, you, it's hard to stop them. Sometimes you can flinch them, sometimes you can finish the hunt off, you can kill them before they leave, but especially in a speed run, if the monster leaves, they take a while to move between areas in this game, and you have to physically run to a different part of the map. So Rosianna put down the trap there, just in, I mean, it was very convenient this time. Blangonga jumped right in, didn't really have much of an issue there. But in some other cases, sometimes Blangonga will try to limp away and escape, and Rosie was putting down the trap right in the, the usual path where he limps from that corner over there. So that was a, a safety strat there as well, even though it worked out very smoothly this time. Yep, absolutely. Something We're to mention too about these games that they're like really clunky to control sometimes, especially the older, you know, generation. Like even just you see that step, right? Moving forward like that uh, puts you in this animation that you don't have control over the character anymore, right? And a lot of that stuff is just trying to time these all these animations together to get the quickest possible execution. <laughs> it's just wild to me. So that was our urgent quest. We're going to be moving on into some more sleep bomb quests next. I know we've kind of scheduled out a couple breaks to take place during the speed run, and this is right around an hour. It's kind of a nice urgent, a nice break towards the next rank of quests. So Rosie, were you, is now a good spot to time for a break? Yep. Okay, cool. Brilliant. <clears throat> All righty. Thank you so much so far. This has been a brilliant run. Really looking forward to, you know, what else is in store. Um, yeah, we're just going to be taking a quick break so everybody you can get a time to you know, have a little stretch, make sure you're staying hydrated. Um, if you've missed any of this run, uh, it will be going up onto our YouTube Games Done Quick um, where you can catch all of that and you can catch any other hot fixes that you've missed through the week. Speaking of events that we've got, our sort of hot fixes and things that happen in between AGDQ and SGDQ, Right for Towels is going to be happening, a one-day event on October 23rd to celebrate spooky season with dark, scary, or horror-themed speedruns from the Frame for Towels community. If you use exclamation mark Fright in the Twitch chat, you can learn more about this one-off event. And if you're watching us on YouTube, hi, we're, uh, we're live on Twitch. Um, so if you want to see the runs as they happen, you can catch us over there. But in the meantime, we are going to be having a break, and we will be back shortly with some more Monster Hunter. Do not go anywhere. <laughs> Alrighty, hello everybody, welcome back to Going Places. This is the GDQ Hotfix that takes us around the world looking at region exclusive games as well as games that we can play on handhelds. As we're traveling around, we have been seeing some lovely Monster Hunter Freedom Unite action in the first half of this show, well first half, first third, um, and we're about to kick off our next little segment of that. Um, but just before we head into that, I'd uh, just like to remind you that your subs, Prime Gaming subs, gift subs, and bits cheered on the GDQ Twitch channels help support Games Done Quick, both with Hotfix and with AGDQ 2023 costs. So please consider subscribing if you enjoy the daily, daily GDQ content. And speaking of daily GDQ content, we have got some stuff happening after this show. We are going to be having Think Fast. This is the, uh, the speedrunning trivia show featuring Celeste and a Hat in Time. I think that's going to be good, but we're here for some Monster Hunter. Rosianna, it is all over to you. Take it away. Okay, uh, would you like me to do a countdown? Sure, yeah. Okay, three, two, one. And, and we're back on. And I'm back off. <laughs> and I'm back to the house. <laughs> Yep, so when we left off before the break, we had just finished our urgent quest, which was Blang Ganga. I think this is getting us into either three or four star now, maybe four star. Uh, yeah, it's Foster. Mm -hmm. 
But this is where the game's gonna start to get a little more scary. We're up against a lot more large monsters and the, the strategies required to make sure that these sleep bombs go off kind of without a hitch are gonna get a little bit more precarious. And it's, it's really special to see I mean, Rosianna do that, navigate that eloquently, but also all the backup strats that can come into play and the, the on-the-fly decision-making to use all the tools. So that's what's coming up next. Yeah, it's definitely one of the, the bigger points to Monster Hunter RTA speedrunning uh, because we can't... Wait, we don't really reset if the quest doesn't go our way in these, generally speaking, right? Uh, you know, the, the categories they, themselves can be so long, right? This one being three hours, uh, Worlds close to three hours, Rise is an hour and a half, and the longer categories are four hours. Even Generations Ultimate is like four hours long. So we don't really reset, you know, an hour or two into a run if something goes wrong. We have to ad-lib and come up on the fly with, with new strategies. And, uh, you know, just the understanding of the game kind of helps with that sometimes. So uh, if the script doesn't go right if the uh if the strategy doesn't go right you know sometimes you gotta you gotta break out the the monster hunter experience and and really uh game <laughs> yeah speaking purely from a viewer perspective where like you i don't run these games very often in terms of speed runs or anything like that i've only done a handful of times and speaking from a viewer perspective that's always some of the most interesting and exciting things to watch where of course you want your friend you want your speed runner to, to, to have a good run, to have a good time. But sometimes it's really exciting and interesting to be able to see their experience on display in those moments of struggle where something doesn't go quite to plan or something goes awry and they're able to salvage it. It's it's super it's super cool seeing that. So I don't wish that upon Rosie at all because this run's been going pretty well. And I don't know, we always want to get a good time, but it's it's super cool to watch either way. It shows off Monster Hunter in a really in a really cool light either way, I think. I'm sure it'll happen eventually. This game loves <laughs> to keep me on my toes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is another environment kind of like the uh, the desert environment where earlier we had the Liver of Legend quest. This is a quest where you can see up at the top, Rosianna's health is slowly ticking down because this is a, a, very, a very hot area. We're going to be up against a monster called Bizarios in this quest, which is, you'll, you'll see him. He's hidden over there in the ground. He, he's he's kind of rockish and he, he'll, he'll sit under the ground there. And so... We're going to have a bit of a timer, not just the speed run, the actual splits, but we're going to have a bit of a timer on this quest before Rosie will cart and get sent back to camp. This is one area and one monster where you really don't want him getting loose. You don't want him falling out of the the script or the things that Rosie has has planned for him. Where because he can run he can run around into the lava, he can roar in a big way that takes some time that kind of thing, but the sleep's gone off without a hitch. Rosie's made sure to kill the uh, the only other small monster in the area, which is Apseros there with that initial bomb. Very convenient, but this is something you'll see quite frequently throughout the run as well, where Rosie's placing a trap where that looks like it should trap Bizarios right now, but it's just out of range. It's just out of range so that when those bombs do go off, he's gonna end up right in that trap. A few more bombs to go. And it looks like with the train shots loaded, that should be it. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Nicely done, Rosie. It's, it's honestly like it looks like it's really simple and it's really straightforward. But even just one, even just starting this, the the script, right? Just starting the strategy, you have to pay attention to things that are that are happening around and making sure that, like, even that that Apseros, that small monster that was just hanging out next to the the Biserios, could have been dangerous for the script, right? If you just miss one of those shots on it. Or it, or it enrages it first, but especially that entire area too. The like, thirty percent of that uh, that last zone that we were in is all out of bounds. If the Basarius goes there, you just can't really do too much about it. You have to wait. For fo for folks who are just joining us and are wondering how it is that these these quests can be going so quick. These are low rank quests, as well as the fact that we're using things like bombs to, uh, to to take advantage of that sleep modifier. And when we are shooting regular shots from the bowgun, when Rosie's firing flaming shots are normal too, these bowguns are able to be upgraded a little further than they would be in other games because it doesn't take any parts to upgrade them in this game. We mentioned this a little earlier, but just for those folks who are still showing up, the combination of the true damage from bombs, as well as whenever Rosie's shooting actual shots from the bowgun, where the bowgun's been upgraded using just Zenny, you can upgrade it farther past where you'd normally be able to upgrade it an equivalent like long sword or great sword at this point in the game really leads to some quests that when you practice it and the game doesn't get a chance to slap you back they can be really fast like this
And you saw there, even at the end of the quest there, even though we're getting into the sleep bombing portion of the run, like we've, we've kind of gone through most of the actual dedicated gathering quests, you still see Rosie and gathering items along the way. Sleep bombing something where if, if you had a, a character in Monster Hunter, you've been playing on your character for a while, you've been trying to grinding different weapons up and, and playing a bunch of quests, you would be able to, uh, you'd be able to get a lot of, a lot of different items stored up. Lots of, lots of bombs, lots of sleep shot, whatever it was that you needed. But in an environment like this, in a, in a, in a real-time speedrun where you're playing through the game from a fresh character as quickly as you can, you're going through on the fly, Rosie is always gathering for stones and things to sell so that she can continue to buy those essential supplies like, like large barrel bombs and, uh, and scatter fish and, and nitro shrimps. <laughs> There's a cat joining me on commentary, sorry. <laughs> He's welcome. <laughs> Say so even yeah, even this late, you know, money is still important. Something to like point out too is the positioning of that uh, shock trap on Basarios. That was one of the that's one of the things that I find so impressive about these sleep bombing scripts. Uh, if that shock trap is just too close to that sleeping monster, it'll interrupt the sleep, and then we miss out on that double damage from one of the bombs, and then now we have to place an extra bomb, and that's more resources and more money that we have to spend to make up for that. That also interrupts the stagger script that Rosiana has figured out because every single time that we detonate a bomb, the monster's going to stagger um, or it's going to wake up or it's going to enter another animation that has been predetermined. When we say these things are scripted out, we, we legitimately mean that. And Rosie is placing these bombs in a specific way to either get certain flinches or certain enrage cycles. So while that monster is doing that animation, she can start doing other things. Uh, it just makes it safer because, I mean... We haven't. T we've done our armor upgrade once, and we we can still just be one shot by pretty much anything. Mm -hmm. Not every single one of the monsters attacks at this point. We're not that far in, but I guess we're getting to the point where more and more of the monsters' attacks, if they were to break three, would would yeah <laughs> would be quite quite dangerous. This guy, especially when he's enraged, his attacks not only have ginormous range, but they hurt a lot. Mm -hmm. yep. <laughs> one of the other smaller crabs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of the yes. other crabs that is not big crab. Much it's like the Daimyo Hermitar quest, much like the Daimyo Hermitar quest, you see him kind of reverse right into that trap. He approaches like that very conveniently, which makes it so that Rosie can can start off the sleep bomb. Pretty straightforward for this quest. She did mention that. She did mention that, that this monster can spawn with a couple different skulls. You see, he has a skull of another monster that he's turned into his home, into his hermit crab home there, and that's the skull of a Gravios. And he can spawn with some more kind of like generic looking shells as well that can just kind of look like a giant seashell. This one specifically, though, allows him to fire a laser of, a, let's say, fluid from, from, from the ceiling sometimes. Mm -hmm. And... That's definitely something that's kind of dangerous, where he'll jump up onto the ceiling and he'll waste a lot of time doing that. And the beam actually hurts. The, the fluid beam hurts if it hits you. But uh, in this case, we don't need to worry about that too much because Rosie's got him locked down here. That's something for the cutscene, where because he's got to be in the cutscene, he'll always actually spawn with this particular shell where normally he would not. But that's all there was to it. Rosie's got him locked down. The quest is done. There were enough bombs put down. Really just goes to show how beneficial going through and doing preparation and all those early quests, doing all that gathering, all that zeni farming, all of that, just how how much that's paying off for now these later hunts that should be taking a lot longer and we can do this. <laughs> yeah, it's not guaranteed. Like if you don't have the zeni for that or if you haven't gotten the right peddler like RNG where every time Rosie goes back to the hub, she's checking with the peddler to make sure that she can mm -hmm. buy those nitro shrooms, buy those buy those scatter fish, which was what you need to craft the gunpowder and the large barrel bomb pluses that she's making. Every time you go back there, it's not guaranteed that you'll have enough zeni to buy those or that you'll get the right RNG at the peddler. So it's an interesting balancing act of like actually playing around the monsters themselves, making sure that you're you're going through and you're you're not sp you're not spending too much on on the peddler with one item let's say you get nitro shrooms one one time and then the next time you get scatter fish um not spending too much on one of those items so that you can't afford the other ones it's a very intricate balancing act and it's it's part of what makes rta or full game speed runs so interesting to watch especially with the retro games too right because like uh, at least nowadays like gen generations forward even like for you forward you had um you know downloadable content that you could use to assist in the, in the speed runs right and uh, this game doesn't have that. You start a new file, you've got 
you got bare bones. Yep. The one thing you do get is insane. Oh, sorry there. Oh, no, the fine. one thing you do get with the DLC is that there is that DLC cycle, like you mentioned earlier earlier on today, Jal, where you have a couple of different like peddler shops that cycle between in the uh, in, in between each quest. You have a couple regular ones, you have a couple sale day cycles, and then you also have a DLC cycle that actually is a DLC thing. It was something where you would connect to to Capcom servers and you would download some event quests, you download some other DLC, and one of the things you could download was some extra items that the peddler would sell. And by having those DLC files for your for your free night, you do get one guaranteed thing. You get one guaranteed DLC cycle. That's about it. You don't get any <laughs> extra items, but you know that the first time you boot up the game, it'll be the DLC cycle there. You get to buy things from the game. Mm -hmm, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> How is this beneficial? You pay us. <laughs> oh my gosh. So either I was reading the Zenny wrong, or Rosie, did you did you have almost 20,000 Zenny a minute ago? Oh yeah, it's all gone. Oh my gosh, I was looking at that and I was like, oh, she's set. <laughs> nope, not even close. It's all gone. Wow. <laughs> when I we say this run is about money, it truly is about money. I just spent um, 10,000 Zenny on a combo book, which is only beneficial yep. for... 5% uh, combo <laughs> chance, but sometimes that 5% lands and it is the most frustrating thing in the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's another thing that's changed from, from from the newer games is like in the older games here, there are obviously ways where you can combine those items together. We're frequently referencing Rosie combining things for those bombs and those sleep shots that she needs. That's not guaranteed either. This game is not kind in that way, where once you even have those items, sometimes if your hunter doesn't have the right recipe books, the combo books in their inventory, in the item pouch at the time, you can just fail. Where like you could have all this expensive stuff that you've <laughs> made sure you've sold everything, you've gotten all the materials for bombs, and if you don't have the combo books, It'll just, gar it'll just combine into garbage sometimes. And so part of spending a lot of that zenny on those combo books is guaranteeing that every time Rosie needs a bomb or needs a sleep shot, it's going to be a sleep shot. It's going to be a bomb. <laughs> yep. Wow, the game was very generous with that wow. call. Nice. Oh, this is a cold crest. Right, correct. <laughs> Can you get hit out of uh, Farcasters in this game too? Yeah. Yep, absolutely. And it's happened to me before. <laughs> and you have to take the walk of shame. Yep. yep. That that zone that Rosiana was just in is literally on the other side of the map. And mm -hmm. you know, it's, you saw how long it took us to get there without that farcaster. You have to walk all the way back. Cuz while you throw down that like green smoke animation, you can absolutely be hit uh, out of it. Mm -hmm. Yep. That is funny. It always feels pretty bad. <laughs> oh yeah, that is definitely a feels bad. Yeah, no fast travel in this game. Nope. All right. We're going back to the hub here. And this next quest is self-described by Rosie as one of the fights we really need to worry about where <laughs> this next hunt is going to be against Monoblos. And this is another example where the game just really isn't kind. You'll, you'll see that we're going to spawn into this area with Monoblos shortly. I guess in a little bit here. I won't spoil it at all. But there's a lot of different things that Rosie is going to have to keep in mind all at once in order to land this sleep bomb. So we'll see how it goes. Man, Monoblis literally was a wall for me in the older games too. I just could not, could not enjoy that fight. <laughs> These bloses can be pretty tricky. These bloses being kind of larger monsters with big old horns that stick out and big club tails that they use to smack mm. at you while while you're while you're hunting them. Monoblis was so good they made Diablos. Mm -hmm. Funnily enough, in this game, one of the biggest deals with these blows type monsters that, that Rosie's about to take on is that they like to dig, and at least in low rank, they like to dig for a long time. They'll stay under there sometimes for like 10, 15, 20 seconds, sometimes just sitting there, not doing much. So that's something that you definitely want to try to avoid for a sleep for sorry, for a speed run, where you, you do not want him digging because if he digs, who knows when he's gonna come back up. <laughs> do we have sonic bombs for this quest or no? Um, yeah, I will be getting Sonic okay. Bombs from the box. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Yep, so if he does manage to dig, there's going to be an opportunity to bring him back up to the surface. And it gives us, what, three? Uh, two. <laughs> two. <laughs> Something I didn't originally do, I didn't used to get the Sonic Bombs, but as of yesterday, I started to implement Sonic Bombs. Really? So what happened yesterday? <laughs> um... <laughs> I was in a call with another speedrunner of Monster Hunter called Freedom RP, and he was um, he was bringing me up to date with a strat he has with this monster, which makes it uh, a lot more consistent. 
compared to nice. how me and Udon used to do the strat. Right. That's awesome. However, so some... it's um, it's a bit convoluted because uh, there's 14 different scenarios that he laid out for me that could happen. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the more consistent strategy. So right now, I'm pausing the game because I'm checking what Monoboss and the Kefalos are doing. So this is what I was mentioning, where this is a very scary quest for for a speed for not just for a speed run for but specifically for sleep bombs where we saw these these cephalos earlier in the run because they were the monsters we needed the uh, the livers of legend from but in this quest not only are they they a pain where they can run around and they can get away from you and they can kind of distract you or flinch you they can also shoot projectiles that wake the monster up they can shoot projectiles that blow up your bombs they can paralyze you it's awful and so th this 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 quest specifically is very reliant on how do these small monsters aggro to us? How often do they attack us? Are they going to aggro and then run away? Or are they going to come over and bother us? It looks like so far this is going pretty well. And that sonic bomb there was excellently placed, where that sonic bomb not just allowed Rosie to, to tell that cephalos to screw off, but also managed the, to get the cephalos right in range of the bombs and get blown up as well. That's always one of the things I'm super impressed by with Rosie's uh, sleep bombing is, is those flashes where in this game if you don't know flashes are not necessarily super easy to aim if you aim them a little bit outside the monster's vision cone they'll miss sometimes and so not only to land one there uh -oh, tragic he got woken up by somebody he got woken up by the ninth shot of sleep because he went to bed yeah at eight, i so i nine. shot i shot an extra bullet that i wasn't meant to yeah that's okay. okay we got backups for sure mm -hmm. plenty of bombs and flashes Plenty of bombs and flashes. Mm -hmm. But there you go. You can see that even if it's like clearly in view of the monster, sometimes those flashes can really be a pain. Thankfully, we've got that sonic bomb oh, no. there. Mm -hmm. I haven't played this game in uh, so long, I forgot that you cannot sonic bomb a monoblast when he's enraged. Mm -hmm. Oh. Yep. Yep. Only when they're unenraged. So this is a bit and tricky where you can see because it is because he is underground, he might stand there for a little while. And so we're going to have to play around or she's going to have to play around. Rosie's going to have to play around however he, he acts when he comes back up. There we go. That is one of the things I'm impressed by, though, is when Rosie's doing these sleep bombing sequences, she'll have traps going on. She'll have the bombs, she'll have the sleep. And during all of that, she'll throw a flash so it hits them like immediately the second they're out of the trap, the second they're out of the bomb. And it impresses me every single time because every I'm time. so garbage at them. I'm so garbage at throwing those flashes. Since Especially because like some animations can overwrite other animations too. Like it coming out of the shock trap. I don't know about this game, but in other games, it makes them immune to certain conditions like, uh, like the, the flash itself. Mm-hmm. Here we go. Oh, that's a high Hard HP play. roll. So, so that, yeah. Something that we've uh, that we didn't really talk about is the trapping condition. A monster has to be under a certain HP threshold to be captured. For each one, it's a little different in this game, uh, but it's somewhere in the twenty to thirty percent range. Uh, they have to be under that threshold, in a trap, and then you have to use two tranks while they're in that trap. Unlike modern, more more of the recent. Monster Hunter games where the tranks act as a condition. So if they exit the trap, you know, they might still be tranked enough to be captured. Oh. Rosie's going to have to shoot oh. two more. That is unfortunate. The Kefalos blew up the bombs. Oh, my oh did it really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That went off what a little a too early. What a jerk. Luckily, that's not far from where Rosie spawns in. You can drop down this well and get right back there. But you can see this is an example of where, even though we're still using the bombs, Rosie's still using the shots, this is an example of where that script can get messed up and the game just absolutely does not let it happen how you wanted it to happen. And that's one of the tricky things about a run like this. Oh, what is he doing? Is what is he important. doing? Oh, dude, he's... Oh, and he's gone. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty uh, late, everybody. Game, you good? Dude, the I spaghetti can't say codes have I've it. ever seen that happen before. <laughs> he was he was getting it. That was a sick dance. Did he transition areas? Yeah. He did, he's left. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Alright, so this is full on a tough situation at this point where the for those who don't know, there's not really a way of tracking that monster unless you have something like a paintball or like a uh a psycho serum on you at the time. And so right now, Rosie has to explore around to a couple areas that she knows Monoblos goes to commonly to find him and finish him off before he derails this particular quest any further. 
Did he really just say, I'm about to head out? Mm -hmm. Oh, no, he really did. Oh, wow. <laughs> Not just that, he danced first, too. They don't usually do that. He added champion oh, hey, on yeah. this guy. Mm -hmm. Unreal. <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> So uh, I do have to be careful about this shock trap because when a monoblast digs, if he digs on top of a shock trap, he will break it and make mm -hmm. it explode. Mm -hmm. Yep. So unfortunately, it's not free at the minute. No. In the older games, it's actually tough to it is tough to trap monsters sometimes because it does take a little while to put down the trap and have it activate. Yeah, it takes so long. All right, here we go. Perfect. Nice. Nicely done, Rosie. Good recovery. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, now my supplies are dead. Yeah. A little bare bones. Yep. I'm getting harassed. By those getting prey, yeah. I can hear the Minoblo snoring in the background, too. I love that. <laughs> he gets to rest, not us. Not us. No rest <laughs> for the hunters. Mm -hmm. I mean, someone, was saying it in, someone was saying it in chat. This game really does hold up graphically. Hmm. Pretty. Yep. That pretty night sky, the sun, or the, the kind of glare from the moon. It's nice. Shooting stars. <laughs> so nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, we could have done that. I, yeah, I, I saw that you looked up in that last zone to see if they were in that zone, and they weren't. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> yeah. Basically, what that guy up there is, is there's a little spotting balloon from the, the hunting guild that's always, hang, always hanging around in a couple of the areas of each map. At least, I think it's on each map in this game. There's a couple areas where you can sometimes see the balloon. And when you wave to them, like Rosie just did, they'll they'll tell you once per quest where the monster is. That's a little tip for if you if it runs away, you don't have a paintball or a psycho serum. It's a nice way to find out real quick where the monster is. Now that that tragedy is over, I get to come to one of my favorite parts of the run. Oh boy. But first, restocking as always. Mm -hmm. Have to restock. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> Do you get enough zenny from from a quest like that typically to be able to make or be, to be able to make a good amount of supplies? Um yeah, it, it gets better as we get further along. After the next monster, he, he gives us so much money, and uh, it, it definitely gets better. We have to worry about things less and less. Okay. Well, worry about the supplies less and less, and worry about the, the damage of the yeah. monsters more and more, then, and their health Then pools. it becomes worrying <laughs> about the monster and not things like money. Mm -hmm. But we always still have to worry about the peddler. The peddler is always the demon, the true demon. <laughs> Of this game. <laughs> Not Gypsy Rose? The second in, true demon. Yeah. <laughs> They're in cahoots. They've got to be. Whatever Gypsy Rose steals, Peddler resells. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's, that's it. You've, that's it. You've got it. You've got mm -hmm. it down. It's Big Crab. <laughs> it's, it's all Big Crab. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you got to take them down. <laughs> <laughs> the lines. <laughs> Pepe Sylvia. What do you need to what do you need to take down the crab? Lots of ammo. Where do you buy the ammo? From the town. There it is. <laughs> it's all connected. Man, what a scam if they were like, hey Hunter, you need to go and fight this big crab, but to do it do these 20 quests and the only way for you to prepare is to pay us. <laughs> wow. Your new okay. Poke Village was so vicious. Me, the last 15 years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Rosie mentioned this earlier where we were talking about how this game's almost 15 years old now. It came out in 2008. And Jal Bagel and I were both talking about, like, oh, we were playing stuff on our DS. We were playing Pokemon. We were playing Kirby. And Rosie was like, I was playing this game. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely wild. I don't think I've ever played a game for 15 years. So this is by far one of the highlights of the run. I want to let Rosie explain as much of this as she wants to, because this is truly one of the most one of the most impressive things I've seen in an RTA run in general, but especially in in like a free unite run at all. This is going to be Tigrex. So Tigrex is the, the flagship monster of Monster Hunter Freedom 2, which is not this exact game, but he's one of the main threats of this run. 
He's very quick. This is like, in some ways, one of the toughest versions of Tigrex. Not this specific quest, but Tigrex in second generation is very fast. He does a lot of damage. He has huge hitboxes. He's very <laughs> scary. Once he gets going, he doesn't stop. He just wants to eat you. So this is a very scary monster to try and lock down and, and kill consistently. Unforgiving is the word I would give it. Yeah, definitely. Very unforgiving. Really, really huge hitboxes on this guy. And here he is from the very first quest of the game all the way up until now, he is still hunting Popo. <laughs> and we're going to ruin his day. Good. I like Popo. You should ruin his day. <laughs> that camera angle. <laughs> Just eats the camera, yeah. This is just such a cool fight script, just in general. <laughs> so we're starting off immediately with a flash bomb right into the six sleep shots that are needed to uh, to put him to sleep. Rosie's specifically placing the bombs over here by his paw. They do deal the same amount of damage no matter where you place them, but she's putting them over there specifically so she can get a certain kind of trip that wouldn't happen if she bombed his head. And you can see she's placing that trap with exactly the right spacing so that he will not fall into it while he's sleeping. And incidentally, not fall into it right after the right after the bombs either. First we get another another trip from that wing so she can bomb his tail really quickly, get some more damage before then he's gonna jump back straight into that trap. So clever using all of these different animations and all of these different types of control against the monster, arguably what isn't really readily accessible in this game, to just take advantage uh, of those animations to continue damaging it mm -hmm. and making it arguably safe for us. So you saw right as soon as he came out of that trap, she had a flash bomb ready to keep him in place, kind of stunned in place where he's not gonna be able to see her and chase her down and then right back in for more sleep shots. The cycle is going to go ahead and repeat here, where she's going to go ahead and place down the bombs right on that wing with the right spacing so it actually procs on the wing. This time... Slightly different spacing this time. Mm-hmm. Yep, different spacing on the... Oh, it's different on the bombs or the trap or both? Um, it's slightly different on the bombs. Gotcha. And then clearly different on the trap. Right into the trap. Man, that's so cool. He actually fell a different way that time. The first time he fell over towards, like, away from the player, whereas this time he fell towards the player. Nice. That's all that was needed. Insane. One of the, just one of the coolest things to get to see. That is just such... That's such creativity. <laughs> and it is just super pivotal that he doesn't get out, he doesn't roar, he doesn't get to start running around, because he really... He just doesn't stop, and at, especially at this point, yeah. I think if he was raged and hit Rosie, it would either one-shot her, depending on the move, or come very, very close to it. So this is a, a spooky quest, to say the least. Yeah, one of my proudest moments in speedrunning is developing this specific quest. It's a lot of fun, and I'm very happy with the way it turned out. And, like... You mentioned in, in your notes that this is one of the things that you, you like this because it, it feels a little bit kind of, it, it feels kind of like some of the more modern Monster Hunter scripts that, that people have in some of the newer games where they know they're going to do this specific damage combo and then knock, knock the monster into this trap and then go after this part mm -hmm. and get this stagger. You're targeting specific limbs for, for specific trips in order to make sure that the monster stays in the sequence that you're going for. And that's impressive whenever it's done in Monster Hunter, but to do it in this yeah. old of a game against this brutal of a monster with supplies that you're scrapping together as you go through the game, like on the fly, it's so cool. Insane. It's absolutely insane. Yes, as we see, I'm now on 18,000 Zenny, so I'm very comfortable right now. Perfect. Awesome. And uh, depending on the pedal cycle, I will be spending it instantly. <laughs> We're set for this quest. But for now, we're going back to the old fateful Heavy Bogon. Mm hmm Because we have to do a rematch with one of our good buddies. It's the purple one, right? 
It, it's both. I think first this is crabs, right? Oh, it's crabs. Um, this is going to be the dual gypsyrus. Ah, okay. So oh, this is a, yeah. This is this is another really interesting aspect of real time speed running. Where in the notes I was watching, Rosie did a, a, a crab quest next against some crabs, but. With the key quests that you've got available to you, like each rank you have a couple different quests you can do in different order, um, you can kind of pick and choose what order you'd like to do them in. And depending on what resources you have available or what parts you need, let's say you're low on a specific resource and you know that this next quest that, you need, or that you're going to do takes place in a, in, in a map where you can gather the things you need, you can kind of tailor which quests you do in which order to fit the order of the run and like what you need from different quests. Did you buy that Psycho Serum? I did. I sent it to the box. Oh, okay. I will be using it uh, much later on. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. There's a couple different items that Rosie stashes away in the item box, besides the actual like sleep bombs and stuff like that. There's a few different items that I think Rosie will probably call them out because they're they're rarely used over the course of this speedrun. But it feels cool to be able to to look at like, oh yeah, remember Kezu way back then? Rosie set away yeah. set away from items from that from that quest that's going to be useful all the way towards the end of the run, and it's neat. That's something where you definitely can't see that on individual level speedruns where like saving away items that you gathered like six, seven, eight, nine, ten monsters ago for one of the monsters later on in the run. Super cool. Here we go. Here's our old buddy. Mm-hmm. Wait, but he's a different have, color now. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, I have some even more expensive items on me this time. Oh, boy. Which one did you want to give him? Oh, preferably... Uh, a single flaming bullet. Yeah. <laughs> Do you even have normal one with you? Um. Probably not. It's okay. No. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about yeah, don't, it. Don't check. <laughs> <laughs> so something that's different from the newer games is in the newer games, you can actually, you, you have normal one built into your bowgun. You have like a default bullet that doesn't deal a whole lot of damage, but you always have it with you. In Freedom Night, you actually had to like bring that with you from the box yeah. and buy a single normal one from the store in order to have it. Uh, so it is something that Gypsy Rose could actually steal your normal one <laughs> if you had it with you. <laughs> That shouldn't be the case here. You can see that Rosie's managing the small monsters and has broken his crystal. Doing a pretty good job here. So um, this instance, he's been extremely aggressive with the pecs. So I haven't been yeah. able to do damage very quickly. I've been needing to dodge because Heavy Bogon is not quite known for its mobility. And he's dead. Nice. nice. Um, Those flaming shots people, really just put in work. For anyone who isn't in the know about his fake death, you, you'll always know if it's a fake death or not because uh, Capcom seemed to forgot to take away the eye icon that lets you know that a monster has seen you. So, so when if you ever want to know if he's faking it, just look at the icon next to your name. Mm -hmm, yep, there's that little eyeball. They'll go from from red or from yellow to red when a monster is raged, and then from yellow to nothing. There'll be no icon there when the monster hasn't seen you. You can see it next to Rose up in the top left there. That first Gypsaros we fought was Purple Gypsaros, and it seemed like, does he do more poison or a different type of poison in this game? I can't yeah, remember he the exact has, He has a poison called Toxic, mm -hmm. which is basically just a more powerful version of poison. And uh, if I get hit by it, I'm pretty much dead because I have no antidotes and no healing potions. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's something where if you're not familiar with Monster Hunter, there are different ways that they increase the damage in the game. Sometimes they'll, they'll have a higher ranked version of a monster that will have more moves. It'll hit harder, it'll move faster. Sometimes there'll be something called a subspecies like that, where you get a, a, a monster that's basically a gypsaros, but it's got a different color, has some different equipment you can get from it, and it has slightly different moves or properties to it. So they, they, they shake things up in a way that is also, I don't know, probably, presumably a little bit easier to develop the assets for as well. Nice. Clean. Mm -hmm. Nothing stolen. He really wanted that book of comboing for. Pedler was pressuring him for money. <laughs> she just <laughs> bought it. Now go get it back. <laughs> <laughs> are these the the rest of the hunts? They're not uh, the the double hunts for the rest of the run, are they? Um, there there are three more double hunts.
Like three, crystal, that's good money. Yep, three more doubles and a couple more single monster quests. Okay. It's also pretty cool that this is, you'll start to see some of these quests that they start throwing at you in a low rank village, and you're like, oh my goodness, they did this to you in low rank back then? Yeah, yeah. they did this to you in low rank back then. <laughs> Here's a Minoblos. A what? <laughs> mm -hmm. Excuse me? And granted, I have you, 30 defense. Yeah, you, you could grind up different armor, but obviously not not over the course of a, of a full game speed run like this. Twenty-three thousand, nice. Yeah, you can see Jao and I are starting to pay attention to like, okay, how much does I need this time? How much does I need? I know, I want to, I want to see how much you spend next. <laughs> I'm, I'm really hoping for DLC cycle here. I've out. got a lot of money, and it needs to be spent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think if you were to talk about this sort of a speedrun category to somebody and tell them about all the RNG checks between like if you needed a material from a monster with the bow guns here, it's more about RNG from the peddler. But in some of the other games where you're routing for specific pieces of armor or specific weapon upgrade materials to upgrade your weapon, there really is quite a bit of RNG involved. It might not sound super interesting, but it's the it's the balance of like game knowledge in terms of the different ways that you can get those materials combined with the RNG, combined with the moment-to-moment -moment, like actual action combat where you're shooting the monsters or you're you're bombing the monsters, you're attacking them. And then also just the the sheer number of possibilities. It's not even, R I mean, it is RNG, but it's just the, the sheer number of possibilities in terms of how the monsters can move and how the small monsters can attack and everything like that, where it's just, that's just not quantifiable. That's not like, oh, I missed this drop. That's like, okay, it's just, this is infinite possibilities in terms of how these quests can go sometimes. Yeah. One of the, one of the, like the bigger aspects, right, which, which we talked about earlier, is the ability to ad lib and to kind of make those decisions on the fly. What's going to save me time? What is going to keep the run going? Because these games, you know, they don't they don't have the way that we're playing in mind. Hmm. This is going to be a rematch against a couple crabs from earlier. Where earlier we fought a single Daimyo Hermitar. Now we're going to go ahead and fight two. And you can see this one sees her and then turns around to conveniently reverse right back into the trap. So because this is a double a double sleep bombing quest, or I guess a double Hermitar quest, this does stress the, the materials a bit more, where you're, you're thinking about how you're using traps and bombs on two different monsters, not even just one monster, and it's like, yeah, that is quite a bit. Like, I, if someone asked me to do this, even on like a, a Monster Hunter file where I'd actually taken the time to make all the bombs already and everything, like I had all the materials ready, I would still struggle to do this properly because I'm just not in the practice of crafting and bringing all those things and putting them down and like actually trying to sleep bomb the monster. It would be nowhere near this smooth, much less like doing it in a speed run like this. Yeah, especially when the way that we're getting these resources is from an RNG uh, shop. You know, yeah. a shop that isn't always mm -hmm. readily available. Yep. Making sure that we have these resources when we get to these points. That's insane. Mm -hmm. Pretty much Rosie's just built different. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> wow, in six sleep shots, just enough to finish this quest. <laughs> I love the crabs in this game. They're so goofy the way they move around. They're so good. So I have come up to a situation where I'm actually short on items because the peddler hasn't been very nice to me. So I'm going to have to improv some of my damage here. For this, you see Rosie making sure not to shoot the claws or the, or the shell. Is they'll take less shot, less shot damage, from, or less shot damage from those those shots than the legs or the face will. That's a hitbox. <laughs> That's <it. laughs> so that attack is so fast in this game. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you saw how, how a minute ago he was like, "Oh, it's a cute crab." Me and Jal were laughing at him. He's like moving around, cute. And then the second he rages, even in low rank, enraged monsters in this game are no joke. They go so nuts. It's so scary. What amazing sound design, too. Oh, I love the sound design of Monster Hunter games so much.
Wow, that timing. Whew. Nice. So for folks who didn't notice there in the bottom, Rosie had shot every shot she had with her. I don't know if you could combine for more damage shots, Rosie, but that was spooky. That uh, was. No, that, that was it. Unless that I wanted to start blasting him with small barrel bombs, that was everything I had. <laughs> wow. Let's hope That's the sweet. peddler's a little kinder next time. Yeah, I'm really looking for um, DLC cycle in the peddler now. If I don't get it, then I'll be forced to do something called peddler cycling, which is where we just quickly go through a gathering quest, which takes around 40 seconds, give or take. And when we do these, it resets the um, peddler cycles, and we're hoping to get the one we need. Mm -hmm. Which is much so faster. We're hoping oh. to get lucky. Yeah, it's still much faster. Even going through those cycles is much faster than trying to go out and do the quest without the requisite sleep bomb materials. Sometimes that's... And I've just remembered, I need to gather more dung. Right. So much later on. Mm -hmm. And folks who've played Freebie Night may be like, what, what are you going to use dung for? Dung doesn't even work in this game, but you'll see. Hey, Cuckoo Rosie, Scale. Rosie will show you. Yeah, Cuckoo Scale. You can get Cuckoo Scales from dung spots, which is a nice bit of money in the mm -hmm. early game. Yeah, I have all this money, and it's Peddler so doesn't want any of it. <laughs> it's an intimidation tactic by Big Crab. <laughs> <laughs> you really got a kick out of that Big Crab tweet, I liked didn't it. you? <laughs> I don't know. I, I liked that you didn't know the name of him, and you called him Big Crab, and I... Yeah. I I think it's funny imagining some shadowy corporation in Monster Hunter called Big Crab. It's like the opposite <laughs> antithesis of the guild. You've got the guild, and then you got the shadowy Big Crab. <laughs> I do find stupid stuff funny, though, so it's okay. Oh, yeah. No, it's great. All right, moment of, uh, moment mm -hmm. of truth here, right? Yep. We're going to walk over and see what, what Miss Peddler has in store for us. At least you don't have to worry about money. <laughs> and nope. uh, it's a bad cycle. Tragic. So unfortunately, <laughs> we're going to have to do our first peddler cycle of the run. Mm -hmm. Rosie was able to tell there because the different DLC, the, the different peddler shop cycles will have different numbers of pages for items. And the DLC one specifically has, has seven, seven pages. So she opened it up, saw there were four pages and went, mm, nope, not DLC. Good old paw pass ticket quests. Yup. 20 seconds to launch, 20 seconds to finish. <laughs> Someone in my chat has a funny joke about this where we, in 4 Ultimate, 4 Ultimate has cycling quests where if you if you want to hunt a specific version of a quest or a specific monster, sometimes you have to go and do a quick gathering quest. And the quote goes something like, imagine flying out to a remote island to like drop something in a box real quick and then fly back all the way. <laughs> Just something <laughs> silly like that. Just moving a ticket from one box to the other. You for folks who are done this, <laughs> yeah, you couldn't have done this on your own. For folks who are used to the to the to the newer games, that was actually how you had harvest tours in the old games. It was called paw pass yeah. tours, where you would go out and you would do as much gathering as you wanted, and then you would go ahead and de deposit the ticket when you were ready to go back. Arguably a better name. <laughs> it's a cute name for sure. I didn't even no, look. Unfortunately, that... I got to do another one. Oh no. Though I did buy um, 99 Velocipre Fangs, which uh, will be used a lot later on. Mm-hmm. It's nice that Another... you have so much Zenny now. Yeah, right? Another super secret Mouseketeer tool. <laughs> I always love that about, like, RPG games where it's... Hey, remember, like, three hours ago when we bought this one really obscure thing? <laughs> We're going to use it now. Mm-hmm. For folks who don't know, Rosie is also perfectly timing the sleep animation so that the sleep animation will get to complete before the quest actually ends. You could say I've done this many, many times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that's another one of those texts that would fall into this is just a flex or this is just a fun thing to oh, do. absolutely a flex. <laughs> Saves you no time. Does save you some rest, though. It's all about the style points. Absolutely. Oh. 
Um, this isn't a uh, DLC cycle, but it does have Scatterfish on it. So this is like good enough. All right. This is we'll take yeah. it. As a bare minimum right there. It has Nitro Shrooms and it has um, Scatterfish. It's what we need at the moment, so we'll take it. Mm -hmm. And then we go over here. We buy 40 of them. There goes 10,000 Zenny. Oh, no. <laughs> all of our hard-earned money. That was all the money they gave you for Tigrex. Just give, give it right back. <laughs> A peddler is too powerful. Thinking about this is fun, too, where you think about, like, in, like in the Monster Hunter world, an average hunter comes through and they buy some healing items, they buy some bombs, they, they craft some weapons. Rosie comes through. $10,000 of fish, please. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> 10,000. They don't make that many fish. fish. <laughs> <laughs> what makes you think? They have 40 of these lying around. That item box would not smell good. In international <laughs> fish shortages. Purely because of one person. <laughs> <laughs> Moga Village. Sustained forever. <laughs> <laughs> off of selling just thousands of scatter fish to Rosiana. <laughs> Mega Village, randomly one of the wealthiest towns. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> well, you see. <laughs> the trading capital of the world. <laughs> and actually, having said that, I, I know very little of Monster Hunter. Is this... Like, what sort of world is this that we're in? Is this supposed to be like a, a look in the future or is it set in the past? I, I'm, I'm interested to find out where this stands or if it's just ambiguous. It's pretty ambiguous. There is there's some different parts of the, the series that show a little bit more of how there used to be a civilization that was a bit more developed than the one that's currently existing in Monster Hunter. And there's bits of that technology left over scattered okay. around. You'll see one of those at the end of the run. Rosie will use something left over or Rosie will use something that's kind of some technology that doesn't quite fit with the rest of the more like simplistic or medieval looking aspects of the games. But it is pretty ambiguous, like where it takes place, where the different games fit together is also quite ambiguous. There's not really a, a definitive through line between like, well, this game takes place before this game and this game takes place before this game it's it's mostly just kind of like each game is its own contained thing for the most part there are some games that mm -hmm. build upon each other where like there'll be a base game and then there'll be an expansion or there'll be a a, a deluxe version or a g-rank version a different more difficult version of the same game that comes out but for the most part each game is its own separate thing in terms of the locale and some of the monsters the the monsters and weapons and items are the things that are shared the most between the games okay interesting Yep, there's like some references and callbacks every now and then, but yeah, for the most part, the continuity of the game is solely with the game and not with the series. So I slept on the bed there. That was a bit of a safety save because I'm coming up to a quite a troublesome monster, the Diablos. So I want to make sure that I keep his cutscene intact just in case things don't go well. Mm -hmm. So that's like what was mentioned before, where it's better, in this case, this quest goes, in the case this quest goes wrong, it's better to save and then completely reload your save rather than to do this quest again or reset this quest once it gets away or anything like that. Yeah, they really do that. just make Monobolos and just add another horn to it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> kind of like the monobos, but just angrier, a bit, a bit more upset looking. So before we had Cephalos in this area that caused us trouble. In this in this quest, we have those Apseros over there. And these guys, they don't have a projectile, but they'll just slowly and surely walk their way over to you and ruin your day. They're very, very slow, but they'll walk over and they'll, like this guy's probably going to start doing. He didn't get flashed when Rosie needed him to be. So she's going to have to use some other thing to get rid of him here in a minute. But they'll slowly walk over, and they'll get, in, <laughs> they'll get in the way of your camera. They'll nudge you with their head. I don't know if they can blow up the bombs, maybe. But They can't blow up the bombs, but they can wake the monster up. And mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go. Which is, I mean, about as bad. Goodbye, Absaros. Yeah. <laughs> there it is again, though. That instant flash bomb that hits them just as soon so as the bombs good. go off. I just don't even see it. You throw it. It's crazy. So I managed to uh, flash this guy at the back at the same time, but this guy's still on the loose. So I'm going to have to deal with him in a moment. See, you thought Monster Rancher and Monster Hunter were different games? No. Same. No. 
We're playing both of it right now. <laughs> this positioning is always so sketchy to me. It just looks so scary. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I'm not sure about this. I got it. Nice. Bye nice. bye, Diablos. Nicely done. And just in time for that guy to come charging at me. Mm -hmm. That was incredible. <laughs> Very they good script. To, they don't get to ruin your day today. Not today. <laughs> but they sure are going to harass me anyway. <laughs> They're going to try. <laughs> They're going to do their best. Approaching menacingly. It's so funny. Dun -un. Oh, Dun -un. there we go. Dun -un. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot how fast they get when they when they get really mad. They really move, don't they? Yeah. So this is one of those quests where there's nothing for me to gather. I've combined what I need to combine, so it's just a minute of waiting to go back and messing around with some dinosaurs. <laughs> That's what I always liked about the original Monster Hunter games, or like the, the older ones at least, right? That like all the monsters just looked like dinosaurs. It goes like, what is this? It's just a big dinosaur. It's fantasy Ankylosaur. He's cool looking. Do you ever do, use the guild points for anything, or is that just kind of like, it exists? Um, its main function is just to give you a nice looking guild card. Oh, sick. All right. Uh, yeah. It's not like the current ones that are like the research points where they can be used to redeem certain things? Um, the equivalent of that would be called Pokey Points. Okay. I, I've used them once before so I could get some extra money. I buy some armor spheres with pokey points and then I sell them. Gotcha. <laughs> you can use them to upgrade your farm in this game primarily, so that you'll add a bunch more things. Where right now you can see Rosie's having to gather for everything that she everything that she owns. She's having to gather from from the maps or, or buy from the peddler. And there is a farm in this game. We won't use it in the run, but you can get a lot of different items from the farm once you've upgraded all the way. Ores and, and different kinds of plants and bugs and all sorts of stuff. Stuff that would make the items that we're going through this run seem like, I don't know, just not as much anymore because there's so much stuff you get from that farm once it's upgraded up. So, um, I am going to do another safety save here because I am coming up to one of the most troublesome bosses in this entire run. And I call him the Gatekeeper. Because see, this guy decides whether your run will continue or not. Yep. That was such a clever navigation there. Because <laughs> that's the... Was that the online hub? Yes. Yeah. And that has fast travel to any of the facilities. So you're yeah. just able to use that to go back to your house, which was at the front of the village. That was just super clever. Yep. It was a little faster than actually walking back there manually. Oh, that's so clever. I love that. <laughs> Yep, this is going to be it. This is called this is this is a Gravios quest, and this is Gatekeeper Gravios. One of the most troublesome things across the whole course of the run, mainly due to I mean, there's a lot of things that can go wrong here, but it, it stems from him having really an enormous health pool, is what Rosie, Rosie told us through the notes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, his HP pool, his HP pool is just absolutely ridiculous, and because of HP rolls that we mentioned earlier, they can vary uh, massively, and. He could simply end your run just by being so tanky, and he out-sustains you. <laughs> That's just terrifying. Fingers crossed. Mm -hmm. So, like, you tell that to somebody outside of the like outside of the rest of the run. You're like, oh yeah, there's this this boss where if I if I get the wrong HP HP roll, it's just the run the run just dies. It's like, oh, that sounds awful. But in the course of this whole run, that's Monster Hunter, man. You just got to deal yeah. with it. It's terrifying. Yeah. This is just what I have to put up with. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Two hours in, and you just lose world record pace because some funny numbers were bigger. Yep. 
That's it's why it's why one day I think I should be uh, trying out Rise because uh, from what I heard, you don't have HP rolls in the village. We don't. That's it. Sounds amazing. It's like a vacation yeah. for me. Give none me, of I'm the coming uh, over. <laughs> none of the assigned missions in World have uh, have HP rolls either. Here we go. So one of the aspects that I thought, one of the aspects of this quest that I thought looked really awful, I was I was doing some studying of one of Rosie's older runs with some some notes she sent over. One of the aspects of this is that as she's flashing him and as she's trying to sleep bomb him, anytime he roars, she has to try and get out of the range of it, and it's much further away. It, it's a huge roar. We have to like kind of run away from it in order to not be flinched or affected by it. So she'll flash him and then run away from him at range. Also something that I'm not sure if Rosie's doing this time around, but in the example run that we watched, she was also using poison in this quest, which is not something you'll see her fire the rest of the run, but this guy's health is so large sometimes that firing some poison oh. shot oh, can geez. help with wearing it down. And not just that, but there are certain parts of this fight, woo, this is spooky. Yeah, certain parts of spooky. this fight where if he's raged, he won't trip or won't respond to the bombs in the way that she needs him to. And so actually wearing down his health a little bit with the poison can historically help a bit with making it a bit easier to script out this fight. It's possible she could have found some new routing since then, though. Yeah, I'm not using uh, poison bullets this time. I'm going to be using a strat that um, the current world record holder, Udon, uses. Oh, he's trying to leave. Oh, screw you! No! Oh, just out of oh. range. So as you can see, this guy, he does not care. He will, he, <laughs> he will just freaking walk away. That Apsaris was being kind of cruel too, right? Mm -hmm. You're such low low health in that red HP bar. If that Apsaris would have tapped you, that would have been scary. I find it amusing that it's sort of two com... I find it amusing that it's like two can play that game and you yeah, just right. walk away as well. <laughs> <laughs> it's so worth noting that the... he, he just comes walking up out of the lava <laughs> with that menacing yeah, walk. Infamous Gravios creep. He's so creepy. And I oh tell him Lord. to shut up. Oh Lord. <laughs> do you have much issue with those small crabs in this area, or do they not really pose too much of a problem? Um, most of the time, they don't bother me, but mm, we'll soon find out. All right. Something that I didn't even know about flash bombs until I was reading through Rosianna's notes is that like even if you don't flash a monster, like even if you throw a flash bomb in the area and it doesn't hit the monster, it still will aggro them. So if like there's a crab across the area and it doesn't get flashed by your flash bomb, all of a sudden it's now aggroed and it'll start knowing that you're there and following over to you. So you see those crabs activate and start to encroach a bit on Rosie's yep. sleep bomb. Here he comes. Here. Yeah. Crab oh, so fast activate. <laughs> Look at him go. <laughs> they're so fast in this game, man. And there's that big roar too. Scary. So my plan is, I reflash him, and I'm gonna run out the area Aha. to reset the crabs. Aha! But the flash because, status stays. Yep. And I don't have uh. to refer my flash. That would re-trigger the crabs. That so is smart. so smart. And there's the second sleep. All right. Yes, asleep. So and we just see, repeat the same strat. You can see that this is one of these quests where Rosie is just absolutely in the thick of it. Where like there, there is a script. When this goes 100% right, there's a script. It happens very smoothly. But when it doesn't, it's just in the thick of it. You've got to improvise. You've got to play around the tools that you've got with you. She doesn't even have damage shots with her. Like she said, it's better to just reload that save at a certain point. Okay, okay there it is. Nice. Oh, oh, it's <laughs> <Insult> to injury. <laughs> And here's the crap. Yep. He's under, coming! Under five minutes still. <laughs> yeah, um, this is... Despite him running away, it's still better than what I had in my PB. My PB was an absolute disaster for this quest. Nicely done. Yeah, nicely done. This... <laughs> this boy! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, but like... Let's let's take let's take a moment to like realize something. That is a man-sized crab. Uh, that crab <laughs> is as tall as you. <laughs> How terrifying would that be? Very. 
There's Especially so when he sat, there we too. go, like that. When he's sprinting <laughs> full force. <laughs> if you saw that in real life, you'd probably just give up. <laughs> I would Superman dive IRL, absolutely. Yeah. What an, unit. What an absolute unit. Be my iframes. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, he also has poison, by the way. I don't I know no why they have poison. Had poison. Yeah, it's very either. rare they do it, but for some reason they just do, even though the Shogun Senator, the big version of this monster, doesn't. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's fitting with this game. Those crabs are way too fast. They have probably too much HP. They flinch you a lot. They can also poison you just because, screw you, it's free to be night. It's free to be night. <laughs> Here at Capcom, we believe fun should be optional. <laughs> 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 All right, we're coming up on another. Like, I'm not. Like, Ro Rosie said that the the Tigrex quest was a highlight of the run for her. I think this. Watching through the run earlier, I think this is the highlight of the run for me. The next quest that's coming up, where y'all will see what it's about. But this is just like a nightmare scenario for me. If anyone asked me to do this quest, I think I would just. I, I get. I, I can't. I give up. I'm sorry. I can't do it. I can't help you. <laughs> so this is just so impressive. This next one that's coming up. Do you have a Freedom Unite save? Me? Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Not a freedom, not, uh. not a speed run save, but no. But I mean, I could finish this quest. I couldn't sleep bomb this quest, is what I what I should say. Is I could uh, definitely clear okay. the quest with a weapon, but like mm -hmm. doing it the way that Rosie's doing it. If someone asked me to, like, hey, could you try sleep bombing this quest? No, not at all. No, no I couldn't. <laughs> absolutely not. <laughs> I believe this is also our next urgent quest as well. Yeah, taking. yeah, this is our uh, next urgent. Yep, this will be taking us into six star and the final kind of few hunts of the of the of the run. If I get this first try, I will be extremely happy. And tuners for later on. It's become a catchphrase. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's always for later. You had a couple different catchphrases or a couple different like turns of phrase in like your notes as you were describing some of the stuff and I liked them a lot. <laughs> All right, a troublesome pair. So thus far we've not seen some of the some of the some of the mascots of the series. There are two monsters that appear in every Monster Hunter game. Those are Rathian and Rathalos. And we haven't seen either of those two yet. So, it's about time we did. Okay, what if we just see them both at the same time? Ask and you shall receive. Because that saves time, right? You know, we gotta got see them. I'm supposed to do them both at the same time, right? <laughs> yeah, just, just sleep bomb them at the same time. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just absolutely floored by this. It's, it's crazy. Oh no, this, this quest is awesome. I also learned something on this quest too. Me too. All right. There's the long boy himself, yep. original Rathalos, with his very <laughs> long neck and weird yep. proportions. They do look a little weird in these old games. Love but yeah, em. so this is a quest for both Rathalos and Rathian. They're both on the map already. They're not in the same area. But if you look, there comes Rathian flying. She's actually going someplace else. But due to Rosie, what what, what Rosie mentioned earlier, where any time you set off a flash bomb, it will aggro the monster. Rathian was forced to land here, and Rosie was able to flash her down to the ground as well. So she's not just going to take out both Rathian and Rathalos. She's going to sleep bomb both Rathian and Rathalos in the same quest, in the same area, at the same time. This is insane. Mm-hmm. Just Rathian doing her thing over there. Casual Rathian moment spinning around in circles. Something Rosie mentioned is that Rathalos has like just absolutely ridiculously low HP here. Oh, Rathian interfering with he him. He might a bit. break out. Yep. Okay. But the damage has been done, so no matter what, he's he's basically done. I've done the damage. I just need him in a trap. Rathian didn't turn around for that flash bomb, unfortunately. She could have, but she chose to idle instead. I'll, I'll use uh, Rathalos's body armor here. And there we go. Right, That's Rathalos nice. done. That was scary. Well handled. Mm hmm Yeah, ideally that Rathian would have just stayed on the other side, still spinning in circles instead of, you know, <laughs> rushing us like she does. 
Since I only have one flash bomb now, I'm actually going to uh, shoot her like this. Instead of a fla instead of flashing her, I'm just going to do it um, as you would. <laughs> Air quotes intended strats. <sighs> That's scary, Rosie. <laughs> Shooting and that I last need to get sweep. rid of this guy again. Oh yeah, right. Something that Rosie mentioned is that she's going to be shooting this Vespoy with poison shot. Normally you can just blow these guys up with whatever, but that Vespoy will actually infinitely respawn in this area. And so by shooting it with poison shot, it will sit on the ground carvable for let's say 20 seconds or so, which is 20 more seconds that it can't infinitely respawn. So she's going to specifically kill that Vespoy with poison shot to give herself just a little bit more of a reprieve to be alone with the rats and not have to deal with that pesky small monster. And once again, exactly enough sleep ammo to end this. I'm taking it slow so I don't nice, have a yeah. monoblast situation. There are so many like different numbers for sleep bullets. I sometimes I lose track of like who's got six, who's got seven. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. No, and sometimes just a little bit better to take it slower like that in an RTA setting, where just a single mistake like that, you know, it does lose you. 100, 150, 300 damage. I'm a big fan of the right barrel placement, just being like exactly where you are as you're placing it, so you, you, you become the barrel for a second. <laughs> yep. Something, something quite comical about that. <laughs> and an uh, interesting thing for the, uh, the last two barrel bombs I do there on the tail, um, if you barrel bomb her head like you knew, usually would, uh, she doesn't flinch, but for some reason if you barrel bomb the very tip of her tail, it will cause her to flinch into the shock trap behind her. Mm -hmm. So that's a case of trial and error. <laughs> <laughs> Just learning, oh, of course, of course the head, the weak, the weak spot doesn't flinch her. Of course it's the tail. The tail flinches her into the trap, of course. <laughs> Obviously, didn't you know that? I mean, yeah. Master Hunter. <laughs> Nicely done, Rosie. Very, very clean. Even with the Rathian charging over, that was so mm -hmm. well handled. Very um, tense situation. <laughs> yeah, totally. All right. Well, that brings us into the last rank of the run. Is now another good time for a break, Rosie? Or would you like to take another one? Oh, uh, yeah. I think it, now would be a decent time. Brilliant. Yeah, that, that definitely serves us well. Um, so... In between this mission and the next everybody, and the next hunt, we are going to be taking another break. Uh, just gives you the opportunity to, you know, take a step out, have a little stretch, get hydrated, um, and we will be back shortly with the finale of this run, which I, I mean, I keep on saying I'm looking forward to it. I'm just really enjoying this run. I hope, I hope everybody else is enjoying it. I, I have a feeling the commentators are enjoying this, and <laughs> Rosiana, are you, are you enjoying how this run is going fairly? <laughs> I've actually been having a lot of fun. Awesome. Good. That's what we love to hear. All right, folks, we will be back very shortly. Do stick around. Hello once again, everybody. Welcome back to the Own Places Hotfix. This is the Hotfix show where we go around the world looking at region-exclusive games as well as playing games on the go, we have had some incredible action in this Monster Hunter run for the PSP. Um, just before we head off into the last section of this run, just like to say, speaking of things on the go, did you know that GDQ is on Instagram and TikTok? You should definitely check us out over there for little snippets of what's happening in the hotfixes, um, exciting videos in the lead up to our mainline events as well as, you know, little bits here and there that can uh, you can let, let you know when to submit for things and volunteer and all that good stuff. So you can find us, Games Done Quick, effectively, any social media platform that's worth being on. But we're back here. We're back with Monster Hunter. Rosiana, send us off. Okay. So I'll do the countdown. Three, two, one, and I'm gone. Good luck. <laughs> Welcome back, folks. For anybody who is joining us since the break, this is a run of Monster Hunter Free Unite. It's an any percent run, which means that Rosiana is starting off fresh character earlier today at the beginning of the stream and playing through to a set point in the in the story or in the progression of the game. In this case, it's going to be the end of Low Rank Village's progression. A State of Crisis is a quest against Shen Gao Ren, and we're rapidly approaching that quest here. We've had some pretty exciting quests, and we've got a few, a few more to go here before we get to the end. 
Yeah, slowly but surely making our way to it. Is there... Do we do we have a longer category for the high rank portion of the game? Um, yeah, there's a... For the high rank village portion, it's called Nico Percent. Because um, the cat who gives you the quest is called Nico. So there's that, and I believe it's like somewhere around eight hours. Oh my gosh. But, um, nice. Sounds like my kind of run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope to do that one day because I'm insane. No, that'd be, that'd be awesome. This is how this like starts out, right? You start speedrunning like the low rank. You're like, all right, well, let me let me start doing the high rank. You start doing the high rank. It's like, all right, but like they just released master rank too, so let me do that. And then you're <laughs> doing a speed run for 16 hours in one sitting. Oh my gosh! <laughs> the people who do that are just so. I I, I mean, insane isn't the Built right different. word for it. So crazy. Built so so cool. <laughs> They're absolutely yeah. built an entirely different way. All right. Now, just for context, Rosie, how, how are you doing on Zenny and items right now following that double wrath quest that we that we finished off with recently? Um, considering my supplies right now, uh, I would call myself very wealthy. However, I am going to need to do another peddler cycle. Oh, what are you missing I, right now? I am missing flash bugs. I still need flash bombs for the next three quests coming up because... Um, as a general rule of thumb, if if there's a monster, we don't want it moving. Mm -hmm. Yep. So um, we're just hoping to see those flash bugs. We don't need too many, but the ones we do need are extremely important. Yep. So for folks who have been joining us more recently, there are a lot of different kinds of speed running for Monster Hunter, but this is one of the ones called, I guess this is most commonly referred to as RTA or any percent, where instead of doing a specific quest as quickly as possible, where you're just killing one monster, this is kind of going through the whole game and as you go through, collecting as much equipment and resources to take out those monsters as you can along the way. And it ends up being a different kind of speed run. There are still things that are just as optimized in both kinds of speed runs here, but this is, this is, I guess a little bit different, a, a lot a lot longer as well, several hours in this case, but really cool stuff to watch. Yeah. A big thanks to Hypnotics and, and, and GDQ for, for having us all out today, because it's really cool to get oh, to show this, this super neat play style off to folks. Or oh, specifically just, to, to help I'm Rosie show it off. You were up for it. Like, I'm, I'm thoroughly enjoying this. I sort of... I knew of this run. I hadn't really seen all too much of it. And yeah, just... You're all in your element right now, and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. And I, I mean, I said it earlier, but I think everybody else is enjoying this big time too. So, yeah, just just keep it up. <laughs> um, unfortunately, another cycle here, but um, I did have a cycle where I was able to buy the rest of my supplies. So after I get these flash bugs, there isn't too much more I'm gonna need in the run, and I forgot to deliver the ticket. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> It's the sleep, the sleep. <laughs> I'm, I'm not very good at talking and playing at the same time. Usually, I don't talk at all. I think you're doing really well today. Sleep notwithstanding. There we go. Also, there's another Just, tip um, for folks. You can deliver the ticket from your inventory. How many people need that? I had absolutely no idea. Yeah, I, when I when I used to do uh, speedruns of this game more often, that's the one thing in chat I would always see like, Oh my gosh, you can deliver a ticket like that? <laughs> it's I've had it happen where I know it's a possibility and then I forget how to do it in the menu, so I'll go and I'll look and I can't figure it out and I feel real dumb. <laughs> I'm like, I know how to do it, I know I can, I just don't know how. I'm panicking just trying to figure it out. <laughs> mm -hmm. Especially in where a speedrun context. Oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, and I will say this about these kinds of games. Like, if you were watching and you're like, man, this is really cool, but this looks really daunting, there are, there. this is a niche speedrunning community, the, the RTA speedrunning community for Monster Hunter, but there are people that are passionately still running all of the Monster Hunter games. Um, so if you are ever interested, you know, the resources are there, the people are there to assist you, especially if you're looking at this and going like, man, like, I don't think I could do this. It, it, it all just takes time. It all just takes persistence and the resources and people are there to help. So definitely don't be uh, overwhelmed by it for sure. Mm -hmm. And something nice about it is that, I mean, obviously if you want to go as fast as possible, there are generally a few weapons or a few strats that, that are in contention for the fastest run, for the world record run. 
but there are a bunch of different weapons and each weapon can in its own way be considered sort of a category where you might not be running with the bow guns you might decide that you don't want to be doing the specific like sleep bombing if you don't want your eye if your eye isn't on that like absolutely fastest world record and you can pick a different weapon and try and develop a route for that one instead and it might not be contention for the world record but all of a sudden it's the fastest for that weapon or you can go against some other people's runs on that weapon instead and there's a lot of variety to be had a lot of player expression yeah absolutely one of the things that I've always enjoyed about this game and about this community, right? So you get like people that are incredibly passionate about one weapon and I'll be there like, yeah, this weapon can't get, you know, under an hour and 15 minutes. And then they post an hour 05 and I'm like, oh, OK. <laughs> I stand corrected. Yep. There's another category in this game. This this category that we're running right now or that Rosie's running right now is any percent. Uh, state of crisis is the quest that we're running to, like we mentioned. But another category is called Not Your Granny Percent. Because, well, <laughs> this is a granny percent run, also called, besides any percent, it's also referred to as granny percent because you're getting the quests from the granny. And people wanted some variety. And so a friend of ours, MH United or Alternate Alpha, came up with a different set of rules that outlawed sleep bombing and a few other different kinds of weapons in an effort to try and increase some diversity in the weapons that you would see played. And since it's not a granny percent and it's 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 not quite the same run, it's it's not your granny percent. <laughs> it's a different category. <laughs> and so in that category, we've seen a lot of really neat stuff where I think the we the world record right now is held by somebody with Hunting Horn, which is not normally a weapon you see played a whole lot That's in Monster Hunter so Freebie Night because it plays very differently. If you haven't, if, if you've played Hunting Horn in some of the newer games, it is very different back in second generation in Monster Hunter Dose and Freedom 2 and Freebie Night. It's super cool. So it's it's very neat to see a different category like that encourage different weapons and things like that. So there's there's if, if this isn't like if this looks cool to you but you're not sure if you'd be able to do the sleep bombing strats that Rosie's doing or you want to use your weapon instead, do not fear. There's lots of different ways to enjoy speedrunning Monster Hunter. Yep, absolutely. It's oh, also so, um I'll say you go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say that it's worth mentioning that both Rosiana and Jalbagel, the two the two fine folks who I have here with me today, to to, to show this runoff that Rosie's doing, uh, they're both moderators for Speedruns.com, and they're both big, big, like hugely involved in that scene and helping people learn and helping people get into it. So, like Jalbagel mentioned, there's there's opportunities to get into speedrunning Monster Hunter, but these two here are two of the most supportive and most out there in terms of providing folks with help, helping people learn, developing strategies, and all that sort of stuff. So. It's worth to mention, these two folks here today, they're pretty great. Thank you. No, you. I saw someone in chat mention it, and I do think it's worth mentioning, uh -huh. so I did. <laughs> oh, right. This is a treat. So this quest is for Azure Rathalos, and Azure Rathalos starts off in his nest, and then he flies a couple different places. One of the places he can fly to, what he's doing right now, is Area 6. And if anybody's ever fought a Rathalos here, you know that fighting a Rathalos here isn't quite like fighting a Rathalos most other places. So this area, there's some weirdness about this area where it doesn't really feel like it was properly coded like we've mentioned spaghetti code a few times over in this run but it feels like this area wasn't properly coded and the monster's ai kind of freaks out sometimes in here like rathalos will run into a wall forever or he'll fly down the corridor forever and so he doesn't really fight you as much in this area it's bizarre but it means that when you do see him do that it's kind of entertaining and crazy but rosiana has to be very careful because some of that stuff not super conducive to him actually being part of a speed run <laughs> Like right now, he takes quite a while to work his way down and actually <laughs> actually get flashed. Yeah, and if I shoot him too early, it will absolutely destroy his AI and he will leave me. So I have to make sure he's a certain cycle in through his flying animation in order to shoot him safely. And now I'm checking the top of the mountain because there's a little guy oh, that can right. be up there right, right, right. who, when I put the Rafflos to sleep, he will drop down from heaven, swan tom bomb, and wake my Rafflos up. <laughs> <laughs> so for reference, like Rosie was talking about earlier in this run, anytime you use a flash bomb, even if it doesn't flash the monster, it will aggro everything in the area. And sometimes there is a chance of a shakalaka, a small monster called a shakalaka spawning in this area. He's like a little goblin man and he'll throw bombs and jump down and ruin everything. They're terrifying creatures, really. And thankfully, this was a role where the shakalaka did not appear. It did not get aggroed by the flash bomb. And so Rathalos is not getting disturbed by the shakalaka. You're still checking, though. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm terrified. <laughs> I don't blame you. Sometimes he gets stuck, and he just takes a while to get down. So <laughs> This game is so busted. I love it. It's great. Perfect. 
Um, it's the uh, same ruffian uh, set up here. His tail is his flinching part for some reason, so... <laughs> on the tail, and then we'll just make one more bomb. Again, we, we try to cover for as many HP rolls as we possibly can. Uh, we can't always account for all of them, but we try our best. So that's why I do safety bombs like this. Nice. Perfect. There are scenarios where I don't need the extra bomb, but of course I don't know his HP, and it's simply just too risky to gamble like that. Well, that was very and smoothly handled. Thankfully. Say... Thankfully, the uh, shackler didn't appear. <laughs> I was going to say, my, my perception of Shakalaka is kind of skewed because my first interaction with them was in 3U with Chacha and Kayamba, so I love them. Yeah. But oh. In, in, <laughs> in 3 Ultimate, they act as your companions. They'll walk around with you and gather things and fight the monster with you. In this game, yeah. they pop out of the ground, they rush you down with knives, and they flinch you, but without being able to be flinched, and then they explode sometimes. It's terrifying. <laughs> and what's crazy is they deal... Like, sometimes they deal the same amount of damage as a large monster would. Their damage is absolutely insane. Oh man, that's awesome. <laughs> I feel like I've never really recovered from my time in this game with Shakalakas, and I wasn't speedrunning, so I can only imagine. <laughs> oh, the amount of times I've seen him fly down from the top rope, the wake of my wrath losses, I'm forever scared. <laughs> Just a shakalaka moonsaulting off of a cliff. It's exactly what he does. <laughs> and the worst part of... is, when he does it, he chases after you next, and he's as fast <laughs> as those crabs. Yeah, he is. They're so scary, dude. Are you headed out to the desert next, Rosie? I am. Okay. So, if anybody if anybody's played some of the older Monster Hunter games, there's there's a few kind of tropes of quests that happen. We mentioned that livers of legend happens where you got to kill those those piscines in the desert and carve their livers and it takes a long time as they swim around you. Another good staple is a double wrath quest like what Rosie just took on. There's another staple that happens in a couple of different monster campaign or monster hunter progressions and that is something called the four horns quest we've we fought a couple different monsters that are bloses we fought monoblos and we fought diablos monoblos had one horn diablos had two horns so for a quest to have four we're going to be up against two different diablos in this next quest and rosie's going to be sleep bombing them both oh monoblos no way <laughs> <laughs> oh no <laughs> <laughs> that would be extra cursed. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't do the speed run if that was the case. I'd say no. Oh, yeah. good. That would be the I'll line. There, are, there are, have been moments, right? Like I, I've done that before. I was like, oh yeah, let me let me do GU, and it's like, oh by the way, you have to fight Glavinus. Like, Ugh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. All right. Oh this boy, is, this this. this Sorry. This is really yeah. cool. This is really cool. Rosie showed us something really neat about the opening to this quest. So you have two different blows in this quest, and they can move around this big desert. It's hard to find them because they hide under the ground. But Rosie uses a flash bomb. She's not trying to flash the blows because, like we mentioned, it, 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 I mean, that's not going to hit it. It's under the ground. But like we mentioned, even just using the flash in that area aggros it. And she left again just as quickly so that it got aggroed and then just idled there. It got left there behind. And so now it's not sure what I, or it's not sure what aggroed it. It's not sure what got it hit there. So it's gonna stay there for a while now. She's just made it anchor there for a bit. So she can go and sleep bomb this first blows and know that that one should stay there. Really smart stuff. That is insane. Completely taking advantage of monster AI and just how this game is programmed. Yep, so, um no longer have to think about Black Diablo, so I know where he's going to be at all times. So I don't have to go searching for him. That was a uh, very weird angle. Yeah. I'm surprised I got that. Nice. It is so much nicer in here without all the small monsters. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. 
But yeah, like we mentioned about both the Monoblos and the Diablos earlier, these two in low rank, they'll they'll dig and they'll dig forever. You even got to see it with the Monoblos quest earlier where it got out of the got out of the script for a little bit. And so it got to run around. With with two of these in the same quest, the potential for that, even without the small monsters, is pretty wild. So it's 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 definitely still a scary thing where you gotta get the positioning just right. And Rosie mentioned this in the notes as well, where it's not just like he flinches and get and, and then falls into the trap. He stands back up and then enrages. And when he enrages, he steps back into the trap perfectly. And he's done. He's out for the count. And that just extends those animations just a little bit longer. So you actually have the time to set up the bombs, throw the tranks, and do everything kind of safely. I'm like nowhere near that observ observant when it comes to Monster Hunter. It's just it's just wild that you can, no, you can build a strat around that. It's so cool. Yeah, right, it's absolutely see. insane. He should still be here. Il -il -il there oh, he is. Oh, yeah, there he is. Hello. Hey, buddy. Diablo's jump scare. Oh, no. That was a very fun Monster Hunter flash hitbox. That was close, too. Here's the flash. And this is another occasion where it's like, these are two monsters in the same quest and you have to try and bring enough supplies for taking out both of them at the same time. Yeah, because returning to the camp and running back out here and all of that would just be, I mean, you can't even restock here. No, yeah, you? I was gonna say, you can't get anything back at the yeah. camp. I mean, there's supply, there are some supplies in the box, but you can't, that's another pretty, I guess that's an important difference to, men to mention is if you've played some of the more recent Monster Hunter games, you know that you can restock items back at the camp. That's not the case in this one. So Rosie has a very finite amount of supplies where there was a quest earlier when Rosie was fighting the, the Hermitar. She didn't have all the all the damage bombs she needed from the, the Peddler. And so she was fighting the Hermitar with, with flame shots. And it came down to the very last shot that she had before she was able to cap it. And that was it. There might've been normal one back in the box, but there was no way for her to restock on, on materials. And just like the other one, it shouldn't rage and step back into that trap. A couple bombs for safety, and off go the tranks. And that's it. Nice. Four horns is done. Something to to take note here too, like Rosie went through all of the effort earlier organizing the item box and the item bar to make sure that all these resources were next to each other when you're going to be using them back to back. That's actually something that we do throughout Monster Hunter games, just all of them. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, like that kind of resource management is, it saves so much hassle and so much hardship. Like when you're trying to do strats like this that take so many different like items and consumables, it just keeps them consistent and fast. It's also important to have efficiency like that because when a monster is asleep, you're on a timer. You have a, you have a finite amount of time to get your items back up ready for when you wake it back up so if you take too long combining items and you're trying to find where everything is in your inventory because you haven't sorted it then you may just waste enough time that the monster wakes up yeah, it doesn't come up too often in in rosiana's scripts except for one hunt right um yeah i think yeah rathalos broke out of the, tra uh, the trap in his in his in his quest but that was it and even then that was fine yeah, uh, I was able to recover that because luckily we have a spare shock trap for that quest. Mm -hmm. So good. Yep, nicely done. <laughs> Well, we're we're starting to run. We're starting to to wind down here towards the end of the run. There's one more quest that stands between Rosie and and the penultimate. Or uh, yeah, I guess this is the penultimate quest, right? This is the last quest yeah. before before our, our finale. This is actually between pretty us cool and too. Big crab. Yeah, this is actually pretty <laughs> cool too. So we mentioned earlier in the run that there's a few items that Rosianna pulled out and saved from some of the quests she was going through, and the one that she's she's pulling out right now is going to be dung bombs and. 
This is a little this is a little odd. If you've played free like if you've played newer Monster Hunter games, you know about no you know about dung bombs, right? They you, you hit the monster, the monster moves the area. Pretty straightforward, right? They work very differently in this game. Where for the most part, <laughs> if you came back into this game and you tried using a dung bomb like you did in the in the old in the newer games, where like you, you walk up to a monster, it's in the area you want you want to be in and you, and you hit it with a dung bomb, it leaves, right? In this game, it does not do that. Most of the time, they don't leave at all. They don't do anything if you use a dung bomb in this game. So there's a specific way to make those dung bombs work, and you'll see you'll see Rosianna doing that here, but she's been careful to, to pick that up in the few areas that have dung along the way. So it's 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 really neat, not just to see somebody set aside items like that, but to get to see somebody use dung bombs in Free Night because almost nobody does. It almost doesn't work. Yeah, when he says they work differently, he means they barely work whatsoever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was convinced, honestly, Rosianna, I've heard reports from folks and I've like seen it once or twice that they work. I was convinced they basically didn't work at all until I saw your footage from your run earlier. I was like, okay, I'm convinced now. <laughs> yeah, they, they work, but with the biggest asterisks possible. Like the fine print. Mm -hmm. So here we go. We'll get to find out about that. Do you want to explain about why it's necessary in this quest? So, um, something that hasn't been, uh, we haven't been able to bring this up very much, but, um, in the forest at night time, it rains, and one special feature of Freedom Unite is that my bombs are X'd out, because you cannot use bombs in the rain. Huh. So what we do with this, we throw a dung bomb, and we attempt to bait the pink raffian into a cave where there's no rain affecting our bombs. And we can go back to Trank, uh, sleep on her as normal. And now that looked that pretty much gigantic like gigantic yellow it, it, cloud was the dung bomb effect. <laughs> yeah, but it yeah. looked like normal. Like you threw it, right? And then she left. You have to do it before she notices you. If she notices you when, like when you've thrown the dung bomb, she won't leave. So you have to do it very. You have to sneakily dung bomb her, or else she will. They will not work. So like, if a monster invades in an area you're already hunting and you throw the dung bomb, it won't work. They're go you're, you're just <laughs> you're screwed. You can't get the monsters to leave like when you normally would in the other games. Oh man. So Rosie's watching the shadow and is scaring her away with dung to scare her into a, into a cave. Rosie mentioned there's a couple different routes that Rathian can take around the island. There's one where she'll go straight into a cave, and that is clearly not the way she's taken this time. So we're going a little bit uh, we're going a little bit slower paced here. And just in case he's here, we wave to Jeff the balloon guy. Unfortunately he's not here this time. Aww. So we just use a psycho serum instead. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for your service, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. It's his day off. <laughs> How much damage does the rain reduce the barrel by? That's a question in chat. You can't even use the bomb at all in the rain. Like you're yeah. not even allowed to press it down. Like you can't put it down or fire it at all. It's kind of bombs wild. are completely disabled in the rain. So this is why we need to bait her into caves like this. Otherwise, we can't do this. Oh, very aggro. Ooh. But yeah, I was pretty convinced that those dung bombs just didn't work at all until I'd seen this quest. And now I'm convinced they do work, just barely. Hmm. Also, a very, very weird part of this monster is Pink Raffian actually triggers the aggro of the small monsters. Hmm, that's not the normal. The small monsters will hit her instead of me, which is very, very rare. But for some reason, small monsters just do not like this monster. <laughs> so you'll see that these Velociprey are going wild. Nice. And I'm just, I'm chilling. However, <laughs> when it comes to sleep bombing, of course, that's a huge problem. Oh, yeah. Because they is. will wake her up. So I have to kind of deal with both at the same time. Wild stuff. I can see you dropping the bomb there. They'll hopefully hit multiple of them. I think they both, I think both the Velociprey dodged it pretty well there. But now they're flashed. I see you also using Poison Shot in this quest, which is not something I think you've used on a large monster yet in the run. Yeah, um, it turns out um, Poison damage on Pink Raffian is huge. It's like <laughs> 360 damage, which is the same as um, two large Barrel Bomb Pluses. So it's just an immense amount of damage from Poison. And those were very inexpensive to buy. Yeah, they were very, very cheap because the Peddler wasn't selling them. Oh, she avoided that. <laughs> Oh, that's unfortunate. Mm -hmm. So like, this is the stuff where I just 
I would just crumble in a room in a quest like this. Like, your job is to put down these items and get this Rathian trapped. Meanwhile, there's the Velocifer going wild, and it's a pink Rathian. Like, I would just crumble here. So it's impressive seeing you hold it together. Keep the whole room locked down. Yeah. Brings a whole new meaning to Menu Hunter, too. Yeah. There's one Velocifer. Nice. Oh, she did me a favor. Yep. That's all of them gone for now. Sleep time. Oh, no, we got another friend, so yep. we're going to have to... Wait. Unfortunately, we're just going to have to deal with him straight away. We cannot risk uh, her being waken up because her health pool is ginormous. Oh. Okay, I'm gonna stall my bullets a little bit more. Yeah. So tense with them infinitely spawning like that. Just so cursed. No, it's just insane. Here we go. All right. And now, like we said, sleep is usually a timer. It's even more of a timer when you've got these freaking small mobs going after you as well. I had another one jump down, so I'm just gonna pull the trigger. Let's go. And again, I'm and gonna I'm gonna, and... I'm gonna attempt to just sneak the trap under her. Hope she doesn't hit me. Nice. <laughs> and we're gonna try a large barrel bomb for good luck, because I don't know what her HP is at. Got it. Low enough. Nice. Nice job. That right there, that's something that you can't. You you learn that after hundreds of attempts, after hundreds of hours in this game. That feeling of. I've done enough damage. Mm -hmm. That is, that is, that's the monster hunter knowledge right there. And that's one of the things that like ad limbing in RTA is just insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, that's one of those scenarios. They get back off of those barrels. Did those hit when, when she like back hopped mm -hmm. and flew? Mm -hmm. No, they missed. So I had to add in another cycle of bombs. Yeah, that's insane. Like just knowing that insane. So now I'm throwing away some items. That's I'm not fine. being wasteful, I promise, because uh, we don't need sleep items anymore. There is a the next monster we cannot put to sleep. Yep. And we can't shock trap him either. So just get rid of every, all the kinds of junk, get rid of them. And yep. we're going to be saying goodbye to the light bow gun. Yep. Bye, the light bow gun. If there are any folks who were, who, who were thinking there wasn't enough shooting, too many bombs, not enough shooting. Get ready for some shooting, because here it comes. <laughs> the next quest is Daka Daka Daka. <laughs> and um, a quest a lot of people are very fond of, but personally, I love this monster. It has one of my favorite themes, and I love the quest. I think it's a very appropriate end to a spoon like this. <laughs> yep, it's heavy bowgun time. Here you'll see another thing. Did you get any pale extracts this time? I did. I have one. And gotcha. uh, unfortunately, it's up to the Lords of RNG <laughs> for it to work because um, hey. it's the Megan Demon drug. And I got it, so nice. I'm good. Nice. Yeah, so it's besides... like 85% chance. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's. <laughs> I don't know what they were thinking. They were yep. being silly. <laughs> yep. Besides the dung bomb, that's one of the other things that Rosie will set aside during the run is is, is some some materials to make a, a mega demon drug, a big buff for this final quest. And I'm pretty sure do mega demon. I never use these. I forget to. So do these do these stay active for your entire life, like until you until you cart? Yep. That's nice. So it's just a straight damage buff for the entire fight, which is very necessary, as one could imagine. And for once, I am actually sorting, also sorting my inventory. <laughs> because um, the layout of my items are going to be slightly different. Because I'm not going to be having sleep bombing materials anymore. Yep, so, now, it's daka daka. With, um, with my inventory full, I get one more space for one more item. And 
Where is it? There we go. The power charm. Oh, nice. That's huge. Yep. Yeah, that's a that's an in inventory. You carry around that in your inventory. It takes up a slot, but it is a permanent damage increase. That is nice. And I also check the peddler one more time. There's a far caster, and now my inventory is absolutely full. Nice. And I just need to go over my items one more time to make sure I'm not holding a dead item. Yep, I am. Trap tools. Cat trap this monster. There we go. Nice, we done. That's a good thing I checked. I saw 99 Velocipre Fang and I'm still curious. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to be used to craft some of the ammo that she's going to use for this fight. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. Yeah, back in the day, you didn't craft pierce ammo from from like a plant or from berries. And so in order to in order to use pierce to attack this monster's weak spot, she's going to be crafting it from Velocipray Fangs. I think, is that level two or is that level one? Uh, Velocipray Fang is level one. I also bought pin tuners, which are level two. Mm -hmm. gotcha. Nice, okay. But um, coming up, I think, is most people's favorite trick when they uh, see this run. <laughs> so it's going to be fun to showcase this here. Because a lot of people don't know about this. Yeah. This quest starts up with Shen Ren slowly, slowly plodding its way into the, oh. into the, the town here. This is a, a classic Monster Hunter trope called a siege quest, where sometimes as a big, like a big ultimate story moment, a large monster will attack the town or will attack a, a large encampment, and you'll have, to, you'll have to stave it off using a combination of your weapon and, and other siege tools like ballista guns or a, some other stuff that you'll see here from Rosie. But the, in, in Free Me Night, the monsters that are siege monsters usually take a little while to actually get to the point where you can fight them. They walk in from afar. And so Rosie is not content with that. Rosie has a plan instead. This is such a this is such a like a specific speedrun trick too. I love it. I'm checking the timer because I need to know how much time I have to sort out my inventory before the actual trick begins. Right, now I'm going to set up. So our main monster is behind this cliff here. But we can't see him. But what we can do is shoot over the mountain to hit him from a distance. So, so by waiting for a specific time and aiming at this very specific part of this structure, I'm able to hit him over the mountain and deal damage that we wouldn't usually be able to do because he's behind an invisible wall where we wouldn't be able to be able, we won't be able to reach him and we wouldn't be able to deal damage. So this is our way of doing damage early while Whoa. waiting for him to arrive. Do you know who wow. figured that out? I I wish I knew who figured that out, but unfortunately <laughs> I don't. That's just so crazy. The, just so imagining cool. the experimentation that would go into finding it out. Because was there any sort of like indication to you, like screen shake or anything that you'd hit those shots? No. Nope. Oh my <laughs> there, goodness. There is no indication that you ever hit any of those shots. You just, you've just got to know. Wow. Cool. So to figure that out, you must have had to like do that. The person who figured this out must have had to like do that and then kill the shit. Or I guess they could have probably had some kind of mod on their PSP or something or on their emulator to see the health, and that would be an easier way of testing this. But if they didn't do that, let's say they didn't, they'd have to finish the entire quest and kind of go, oh, it was a little bit faster. I must have hit those ballista. <laughs> yeah, a way of actually knowing if you've hit these or not is because we're hitting a very specific part of the Shen. We're hitting his shell. So if we break his shell early, we know we've hit all of those shots. Uh. Oh. Big oh. crab. Mm -hmm. There he is. is. He's here. <laughs> Give us our Zenny back. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, this is it. This is the, the, the final low rank progression or story boss, Shen Galran, attacking the town. And like Rosie said, one of her favorite quests. I love this theme tune so much. Oh, yeah, I'm just, tracks, who certain... designed this? <laughs> Who Rosie didn't you? mention this when she was looking here, but right, right when he walks out of the fog there, that's when you're actually able to attack him. Or you can see him before that, but he's behind an invisible wall, like Rosie mentioned. And so besides the ballista, you have to wait until he passes that. 
And this fight essentially has a couple phases here where he's going to be standing up on his on his legs like this, at which point you kind of have to stay, you have to keep your distance because too close and there's big tremors from those shakes where in between his steps, it's very difficult. If you're a Blade Master weapon, you essentially have to have tremor res on your armor or you need to kind of like go in and get a hit on a leg and then roll out of the way before it takes another step. It, it's very, very difficult to do. Hmm. And so... You have to kind of watch out for the legs, but then once you deal enough damage to him, he'll come down, and then the actual daka daka of the of, of the run will begin. Also, as a side note, if you ever lose this monster, Jeff is up there, so you can wave at him, and he'll give you the guide as to where this monster is. Yay. Oh, that's really helpful. Hi, Jeff. Hi, Jeff. <laughs> oh, cool. Mm -hmm. You can see it's got the it's got the shell of another monster. That's Lao Shan Lung, who's actually another one of the larger siege fight monsters, which makes sense. It's a pretty big shell, yeah. But that's one of the goals for Rosie is to break that shell. There's actually a weak spot hiding inside that shell, and some bullets can already reach it. She's got a type of shot called Pierce, where most most of the shots Rosie's firing are shots that, like the ones she's firing right now, are dropping little bombs that explode. But most of the shots that Rosie was firing at the legs, for example, are like a normal type of shot where they'll just hit where they hit where you shoot and they'll deal damage to that specific spot. Piercing shots that Rosie has are going to go through the monster and will actually deal damage to the weak point even before she breaks the shell. But the goal is still to break that shell down so you can easier access it. Rosie noted to us before that at this specific point, she has a couple options based on what Shen is doing. And whether he stands up or stays low down will dictate whether she goes for this next siege tool or whether she was going to fire some more ballista shot at it. So it looks like she's going to go for this next siege tool, which is a pretty exciting siege tool. Folks, folks who know Monster Hunter will know this thing. Watching the timer is actually also quite important because this tool she's about to use, the Dragonator, where she knocks the crab right down with those giant piercing beams, uh, that Dragonator comes back up every 10 minutes or so. It may not look like it as well, but he's readying a big attack. <laughs> he fires a big old blast. He's like a big artillery cannon. Such a cool monster. Mm-hmm. So now that she's now that she's done that dragon air, now she's come back down to do the ballista. Ballista are nice because most of your shots, like we mentioned earlier on in the run, most of your shots, you have to pay attention to where the monster is weakest to different types of shots. Where Shen Go Ren, I'm actually not sure if this is the case. I know Rosie's firing flaming damage. I think actually I do know that this is the case. It's weak to fire on its legs, so that helps bring it down to the ground faster when you when you deal fire damage to those legs. The shell yeah. is not particularly weak to fire. It's not really weak a whole lot at all, which is why she's using cluster bombs and she's using ballista, where both those things, both bombs, like we've been using throughout the run, and ballista themselves, deal true damage, where it doesn't matter where you shoot the monster or where you hit the monster with them, it'll deal the same amount of damage. So she's able to use those to try and break that shell a little quicker. So that's our first break. It's and a little tricky. Knockdown animation too. Yeah, you can tell you're dealing good damage to it. It's a little tricky to actually know where the weak spot is before you've broken the shell fully. Rosie knows where it's lined up. It's kind of right in line with if there was like a neck at the back of that Lao Shan's skull or right where his tongue, like the back of his tongue would be. That's where the weak spot is in there. I like to call that weak spot the dingus just for fun. But we'll see, we'll see it in a little bit from here once she actually breaks the shell open. Anatomically correct dingus. <laughs> So yeah, since he's back up on his legs, Rosie will go back to firing more flaming shot. Quests like this are always interesting because they're they're very they're balanced very differently than some of the more intense quests that Rosie was going after, like the double wraths or the the, the Diablos, where if they'd gotten free from her for even a moment, they could have ended her. This is a little bit more slow paced, but it's a lot more of a damage check and like a can you do this without making mistakes, especially in a speedrun context. Oh. <laughs> He's got, huh. he's got a pretty big foot. That's terrifying damage. Yup. Yeah, especially like with these kind of siege fights that you actually have to do something during knowing what to do and when, make having that decision making and you know your script for each kind of behavior is very important. Mm -hmm. Yep. Truly, using the siege tools in different like orders and at different times can really result in more staggers and more damage dealt for you overall. And it, it takes some trial and error. I'm always really bad at these. I always manage to get them to somehow make them do like the worst possible patterns and <laughs> not the best. <laughs> So 
I saw somebody ask in the chat how you know when the monster is weak. And across the series, the monsters will have parts break off and they'll respond a little bit differently. A giant hulking monster like this Shen, there's not a great way of knowing when he's weak on weak on health because he doesn't he doesn't tend to limp or get more enraged or anything. Other monsters, the more damage you've dealt to them, the more parts will break off and the 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 quicker they'll get enraged over and over and eventually they'll limp away and sleep too. And those are all tells that you've got the monster low. So it's neat. It's that's something quite different than I guess most game series is that there aren't any health bars. You can kind of get used to it. You get you gain that sense where that's something very important when Rosie's using some of these resources of hers in the other quests, like with that pink Rathian quest that we just saw, yeah. where she she chucked out a, one last barrel bomb and went for the, the capture, where the monster's health has to be low enough in order to capture it, and she just had to know that okay, I've I've done enough damage, even though a few of my bombs missed, I've done enough replacement damage with some more bombs or with some shots that this is going to work. This is going to be okay. <clears throat> oh, the true face of terror. He's turned <laughs> to us finally. Yep, you get to see his you face. You get to see this end of him. <laughs> wow, this boss is a real like test of endurance. I know like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I haven't heard I haven't heard anyone saying like, oh yeah, we're near the end now, and I'm just like, what? It just keeps going. <laughs> it does. They have big, big HP. Yeah, and like nice. you were mentioning, like no health bars. I think that that's super neat. That it's sort of like not storytelling, but it's like natural. You know, you, you start to tell when the boss is when the boss is going. I think that's super neat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, because you have that's to use kind of like the monster's behavior or part breaks to determine if you're dealing damage and how far along you are. I just yeah, want to throw like this out there. Yeah. Um, the weapon I'm using to kill this is still the weapon I've had since the very beginning of the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Hey, if, if it ain't broke. Normally you would have gotten a chance to upgrade this, like if you were playing the game at a more meandering pace and you had a chance to fight different monsters and make their guns that were stronger or make an armor set that had even more attack skills that were built into it, you'd be able to deal a lot more damage than even this. But this is Rosie making do with like just the, the basically the, the, the most basic gun upgraded as far as she could take that specific model, but nothing more. Yep, the bare minimum. Monster Hunter Monster Hunter RTA has always been about the bare minimum. <laughs> yeah, what pretty much. What is the what is the least amount that I have to do? Oh, nice. And there's Good that shell trick. break. You can see it. Oh, yeah. You can see the dingus. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, did not think, moment. I did not think that I would be hearing that on this show today. <laughs> I mean I didn't think that I'd be hearing that at all today, but here we are. Here we are <laughs> describing a final boss's dingus. <laughs> what, it's what kind of like a tonsil. <laughs> we can we can call it a tonsil to be um, proper, but Dingus is more fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I'm fine agree with that. Nice. All of these staggers yeah, these... are good indicators. And this. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. But this quest is was a this was a multiplayer quest. This was a hub quest, wasn't it? Uh, mm -mm. this no. one's in the village. It there is, are okay. versions. There are versions of these monsters where you can take them on with four people, and they'll have a bit more health to compensate, and it'll go a little quicker. But specifically, this one's in low rank village. It, it is, is just okay. really quite tough when you're when you're using equipment that's really like this is the bowgun you are given for free at the beginning of the game. It's not an upgraded <laughs> Tigrex one or anything like that. Yeah. Oh, sorry, we went into the uh, we went into the hub for the power charm, uh, for yeah. the, the shop there. That's right. Okay, mm -hmm. I couldn't remember if we launched the quest from there or not. Yeah, um, the village doesn't sell the power charm, so I have to go to the uh, guild for it. A small Just price giving to that pay. money back. Give them that money back they gave you. It's all a big scam. All big crab. This whole time, you're also keeping an eye on the timer to try and see when you're going to be able to use that dragonator up at the top again to try and deal some more of that big damage. Rosie mentioned in her notes that the Dragonator is a thousand damage, so it's equivalent to like just over. I oh mean, I'm so bad at math. It's like just over seven, it's like of seven these bombs. bombs. Yeah, like seven bombs yeah. worth of damage all at once. So it's a ton. Nice flinch. Just keeping that power seed uh, bonus going to that power seed to consumable that provides uh, if I, if it's the same as the other games a three minute bonus to to damage. So you just have to keep those up too. Um, uh, something we haven't mentioned before because it hasn't really 
been it hasn't come up very often but um bullets have these properties where depending on how far away you're hitting the monster with the bullet it will do more or less damage so with a piercing shot here um you i don't want to be too close but i also don't want to be too far away there's kind of like a just right sort of distance away from the monster i have to be to get the maximum amount of damage from the piercing rounds mm -hmm. Yep, other yep. shots like the flaming shots she's been using have a much more forgiving critical distance, whereas the Pierce, you do have to be a certain range away in order for it to deal the most damage. This is the first time we've seen Pierce in this run. Like I mentioned before, it kind of goes through the skull there. It doesn't just hit the outside of the skull, it goes through and deals damage to all the parts as it pierces through. So that's pretty interesting. That's useful on some monsters more than others. Smaller mm -hmm. ones, it's definitely not super useful for it, but big ones like this, oh, they're just pierced food. It's great. Oh, yeah. Big, long monsters that have decent hit zones all the way across it for that gunner damage. They mm -hmm. love pierce. Yeah. I'm now out of bomb materials, and I'm out of flaming bullets, so... I'm just going to be using normal bullets level 2 now, and just mashing circle. Mm -hmm. You do have that dragon that you're coming up, though. Definitely a gunner moment, for sure. <laughs> I mean, with a blade master, if you're up close to those legs, like let's say you did this run with hammer or something, you'd have to be really careful of oh. the stomps and everything so that you don't get trapped or stepped on. Definitely scary. The trade-off, of course, is that gunners have less defense in general. so where a Blade Master might be able to get stomped on two or three times and not cart, a, uh, a gunner might just get squashed flat immediately. So it's definitely a trade-off <laughs> there. Trade-off for being able to kind of pick and choose where and when you're going to put that damage down. Yeah, exactly. The sound effects are crazy too, where there's like these giant <laughs> cracking crumbles. It sounds like some kind of mecha, like a giant mech is like right there, but it's a giant crab instead with his joints. Mm? Aha, it's time. So Rosie far casts back because it's quicker than climbing up. It's been 10 minutes since the last time she was able to use the Dragonator and now Shen is approaching the fort. So it's lined up and, for this um, good damage. If I have done this all correctly, then I should be able to say <laughs> nice. Congrats. GG. G -G. Nice job, Rosie. And there we go. That's the end of the run. <laughs> Nicely done. Look at that. <laughs> then he just falls face first into the fort. <laughs> into the fort, yeah. <laughs> That's the monster hunter right there. We've done it. Face We've palm. defeated Big Crab. <laughs> <laughs> Good oh job, Rosie. Gosh. Yeah, nice to meet you, Rosie. Brilliant. Yeah, Absolutely that was absolutely fantastic. A lot of fun. Thank you so much for showing that off. Um, yeah, this has been this has been a great run. I'm really I'm really glad that all of you were up for this. Um, Rosianna, any closing thoughts? Any shout outs? Um, I'd like to say, well, a big shout out to the whole Monster Hunter community in general. They're all really cool people. I want to give individual shout outs to Freedom RP, who's been helping me with a lot of strats. I want to give a shout out to Viras Kalia, who's been very supportive of my speedrunning over the last three years. And a huge shout out to Ristretto and Del Vago to for agreeing to do this with me today. It was such a treat. Thank you so much uh, for inviting awesome. us, having us on. So much fun. Yep, absolutely amazing run. Good job. Yep. I saw something mentioned in the chat where, in general, even if you're looking at this and you're daunted by the speedruns, or you're just looking at this and you've never tried Monster Hunter, the Monster Hunter community in general is really, really welcoming. So feel free and reach out to any of us or just, just to a Monster Hunter chat. Questions are usually pretty, pretty welcome and folks are happy to help you get into the games. Awesome. And if people wanted to find, you know, any of you individually, um, Rosianna, is there sort of a stream that we can, we might expect to see you on? Or? Um... On Twitch, I am just Rosianna on Twitch. And then on Twitter, I am Rosianna Chu. That's C-H-U, all one word. 
Awesome. And Jow and Riss, like this is your chance to, you know, flex your set <laughs> yeah. flex a little bit. <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, yeah, you, I, I stream more of the uh, modern Monster Hunter games, uh, but you can find me on Twitch at, at Jow Bagel and on Twitter at Jow Bagel as well. Um, and if you want to get more involved in the speedrunning side of the community, the Monster Hunter speedrunning uh, Discord is also included on the MHSR's uh, speedrun.com website. So that's speedrun.com slash MH. If you guys want to find more resources for speedrunning Monster Hunter games, like Freedom Unite or like any of the other ones. All right. Well, I'm Ristretto, Ristretto Rambles, and you can, you can find me on Twitch by searching that, which is, I guess, Ristretto is an odd type of coffee, and, and the word rambles. Uh, I don't really speedrun the games very much. I, I play a lot of Monster Hunter games, but I tend to play them almost as slowly as I can, trying to try out a lot of the different weapons and quests and a lot of, <laughs> just a lot of different things. So if you'd like to see somebody meander through the games, we talked about meandering paces a bit today, then feel free and drop by and feel free and ask a question about whatever you'd like to. I'm, I'm game to help folks get into the series. I hope that getting, I, I hope that Rosie's run today was a lot of fun for, for folks to watch and that folks will check out the games. Monster Hunter's a lot of fun. Yeah, I think I'll definitely, you know, find out a bit more. I barely knew anything about the series going into this, but this has been a good, a good eye opener. Um, very, very much enjoyed this. Well, everybody, that was going places for today. I've got to show a big thank you once again to Rosianna, Gel Bagel, and Ristretto for yeah, just a really, really good showcase. Really, really enjoyed this. Um, this is going to be us for tonight. If once again you miss the start of this show, you can catch up on the Games Done Quick YouTube channel where we'll have this, as well as all of the other hot fixes. And speaking of which, very, very shortly after this, if you stay tuned, you are going to be watching Think Fast, which is the speedrunning trivia show featuring Celeste and a hat in time. And I believe. We have got Hotfix's very own Frozen Flygon going up against Cactus in Celeste. So, hey, that's that's a big that's that's a that's a big matchup. But you should definitely stick around. This has been going places once again. Thank you everybody for watching and stick around for what's next. <laughs>